it, it almost feels like you're doing a Brewster's Millions type thing here. Where you, <laughs> after a, billions, a, yeah, Brewster cuss billions. Where he ha, he's given a billion dollars and has to have nothing to show for it by the end of thirty days. I like that he also can have one of the dumbest ideas ever. You mock it, and then he claims you're just jealous. <laughs> you didn't think of it first. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by Underdog Week 8. Picks against the spread, Cuss Corner, and all things in between. You good people out there. Smash like to the episode, and if you want to get into a draw for $500 cash, there's easy ways to do it. Number one, though, sub to Mayo, Mayo, Mayo Media Network right now on YouTube. Okay, more details later on. Jeff Feinberg on the line with me, coming off a devastating loss on Monday Night Football. Tim always complains when it's always the last game of the week when his team plays. Do you agree? Only week one. Only week one. Because, like, you're waiting so long. That Tim's, like, Christmas presents analogy, opening the presents last, that's actually, like, my writing credit. Um, So that I agree with. But Sunday, like, the actual Sundays are some of my favorites of the year. Because one of the slates, I'm not all consumed with a game. I get to enjoy it. Uh, So the Monday night, Sunday nighters I really look forward to. Last night was a little too late. And an unfortunate frustrating result uh there aren't many well I should say when the highlights of the night for me i don't think i've seen a road game that had that much chargers representation so that's pretty cool and i don't know whether i sent all you guys or just tim a clip of travis kelsey after the chiefs game being like that was the most charger fans i've ever ever seen in sofi referring to the game a few weeks ago so maybe we actually have some fans but I don't blame the refs. I don't think they, you know, it's not their job to be on our side. They didn't help. But just a total lack of execution and inability to run the football. Uh, just no fumble luck. And we, you make that luck. Some devastating fumbles. Pozzola wanted me to come on the stream. Like, I'd have just been lying there like a beached whale after that <laughs> Rager fumble. So I'm happy I didn't go. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like... The offensive line played horribly. Herbert played really, really good. Almost, a, if they could have won, I would have said he could have played amazing. Uh, I wanted him to run a couple more times on the final drive. But I think you've kind of said it a few times, Pat. Like, that's kind of symbolic of what a lot of Charger games might look like. And they got a flag football team to play to their style score pace. So that was a bit encouraging. But a bad loss, like the first bad loss of the year. Bad loss, bad loss. Well, Jeff's team is reeling off a bad loss, and the team of our next guest, he wouldn't know because he's not watching the games, but he'll have to this week. It is Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. That's not my name. Um, I didn't even watch the highlights till today. I figured I should be prepped <laughs> to wa- for the show. And so I couldn't watch them Monday because it would just be too painful. Okay, I got to ask and you. I didn't, I gotta, I didn't I, watch I, a snap I, on Sunday. So I, I watched the highlights on YouTube today. I got to ask you, how do you feel about the George Pickens bobbling everything to himself and then Garrett Wilson just bobbling it to the other team? <laughs> like George Pickens is like somebody who makes those really high difficulty catches. So I can't say I'm shocked. Would you call him yeah, the I did- Brandon Lloyd of our generation? I bought he's significantly more talented than Brandon Lloyd was. Um, I will say that the, that the the Wilson one that hit him in the chest and turned into Beanie Baby, taking it all the way 99 <laughs> yards to the one yard line. Um, I would say that is just really bad luck, but that's not the reason they lost the game. Uh, they lost the day, game because they got beat bad by a team that uh, should have been. Uh, there were three teams last week where there was really no argument to favor the Jets, the 49ers or the Vikings. There was just no case to be made, and all three teams that should not have been favored lost. Uh, you could have made a, a decent chunk of change, money in line parlaying the three teams who were dogs who shouldn't have been dogs. Uh, it didn't make any sense as to why the Jets would be favored in that game. They got up nine points, and they didn't give, and they gave up 31 straight. You know, I guess Aaron's at fault for that, too. You know, I, I guess, you know, I we can't blame, blame the defense. I blame him for a few things. I mean, oh. he threw one bad pick, and he threw one unlucky pick. 
and he threw like 285 yards. Like, you know, maybe the defense doesn't need to give up 37 points. Um, I, I watched the highlights today. It was, it, they, they no longer caused pain to watch them because it was two days over. I was like, oh my goodness, this team is just so bad. Like, props to, uh, props to the Steelers and to Russell Wilson, who played well. I mean, I think the Steelers did certain things on Sunday night that, that they would not have done with Justin Fields, so it showed that Tomlin probably did make the right decision. Well, let, let, uh, let's unpack that for a second, because I, I talked okay, about that a little sure. bit with Jake on the Power Ranking show, and obviously we didn't get to see what happened when we did the recap, but Jeff... You know, it wasn't even really that much maligned of a split. Like people were like, "Hey, Fields is winning games, so you keep him in." But it felt like they ran a real offense for the first time all year with Russell Wilson. Yeah, he played great. Yeah. Uh, the law balls just falling into basket—that's sort of Russ's prototype, uh, right from go. Though they designed it lovely for him. You know, just little Darnell Washington in the flat. Nice to see. It was nice to see. We've all self-included taking shots at Russ. Uh, and even like their first two drives, they wanted fields in that game. Like they were booing him off the field five minutes into the game. Uh, I'm sure there'll be games where there's a lot more turnovers and the Tomlin voodoo doesn't show up. But that was a classic case of Tomlin voodoo. Mm -hmm. And now trust, uh, Russ, is, Russ is being supported by that voodoo. And the results so far were pretty impressive. Well, and the Jets suck. The yeah, Jets. Yeah. I'm sorry. Tell me about it. Like, All you people I, last week who were absolute buffoons talking about how, oh, they've still got a 40% chance to make the playoffs. And they're such a great. Well, bet. you did. I you could have won no, the game. No. When I told you the Buffalo game was the hinge game. And when they lost it, this is what happens. Like, I saw somebody on the somebody I maybe was on Reddit or something said, "Oh, they still have like a forty six percent chance to make the playoffs." According to some, I was like, "No, no, they don't. They have a no percent chance." Roger, it's over for them now. It's okay. It's over for them. Just get <laughs> the, with it. The, the problem is Rogers isn't self aware to his abilities. No, like sure. he still Th thinks this was, this was actually that... a cuss corner topic that I had coming up. That that's read my mind, Jeff. Not about Rodgers, well, but just like in general. That interception before the half is a guy who still thinks he's a top five gunslinger in football. I was told he's like, a top ten runner in football at the quarterback position no less well, than three weeks he, ago. And, the and problem what was the is score? that he makes was some of those throws. To three? What was the 15, score he threw? 15-6. It's second down. The, to, there's yeah, like a minute and a half one, left yeah. him. Yeah, and I they know. run the ball. They run the ball on first down almost as like, okay, we're going to make sure we kill some clock here. Uh, because if we go three and out, we really don't want them. And he gives them the ball inside a midfield. You guys just what a and then I saw they chose to kick a field goal inside like the 12 yard line again. Oh, that like, was embarrassing. That should never too. happen. That should never happen. Jeff Ulbrich and now the two games that he's coached loves kicking short field goals with a kicker who you can't trust. Like, I, I what don't about understand. Sauce? Can you tell me about sauce. Well, if they're going to call PI on him, he's not as good as he was. What, what, okay. what say? <laughs> Reed Reed rates out now was like one of the best cornerbacks in all of football, and Sauce gets all the credit. Now, I, I mean, they didn't throw it. So, like Buffalo barely threw at Sauce Gardner, and like the week before, like uh, they the week before they barely threw at Sauce Gardner. But it did. But last, it looked like the Steelers took their shots at him, and Pickens just won the battle. I don't. I don't know, man. Like you've whatever. lost a game in so, to Bo Nix and Russ Wilson. Sure have, but you know what? As you noted, the time change is coming, so I have things to look forward to. But uh, you spent shows like multiple weeks yelling at people about how much better you are at every position. Well, in Name part that, team. but you know, that's I take responsibility for that. But you know, you should take some responsibility for that. Who kept saying throughout the offseason, well, if you were excited about last year, then you better be really excited about this year and even more so because you're better. So yeah, you're right. You I know, mean, I, I like the Jets, but that was intense. Anytime you weren't getting excited in the offseason, I was like dropping. Yes, cheese. you were. Yes, I was you like, were. Tim. So, like, <laughs> I was like, you have to be excited. This roster is as good or better than last year. Please get excited. And so, I did. will, you know, I'll accept that I was completely wrong, but I just want to note for the record that Jeff made it much worse. He hey, was enabling. There is only one of you who has a Super Bowl future on the Jets to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's I, I, I 
I am so glad you get to look at that in your uh, <laughs> you know undecided bet uh, category for months, and then think long and hard about. Uh, that it's pretty decision. far down there. There should no. There so, should be a there should be a folder that you can move the ones that are really at a contention to, and then every once in a while, Jesse, like in case you're scrolling down, like, hey, what Masters future do I might have right now? It's like, oh yeah, I also bet the Jets to win the Super. So Bowl. you should have like a you should have a junk folder. Yeah, it's like an incognito mode of your terrible bets that are still technically yeah. open. Uh, I, I I agree well, with that. Uh, it's still there, and you'll get notified when it grades. But, and I have uh, to say, like, the great thing about not watching the game is that, like, it didn't hurt at all. And having seen how that game went, you can't tell me that watching that game would have been good for me. But you don't. What is happening when you're not watching? Like, you don't have this, like, nervous energy about it? No, I haven't for the last two and a half weeks, Jeff. I just flipped you on are... the baseball game, and I was been I've been enjoying life. I'm going to bed. I'm not. I'm just not worried about it. They like I've I've been so damaged by this team that I just no longer am going to allow myself to allow myself to look. Ultimately, I'm doing it to myself. They aren't actually doing anything to me. I'm doing it to myself, and I've decided I need to stop being self injurious with this team and just like. Take a deep breath. I know they'll be on one of the TV screens next week at the house. I get that. That's Main fine. Screen. They can be there. They can be there. But that doesn't mean I need like need to focus all my energy on it and walk around. And, like at least they're on the main screen. I won't have to ask you to get up so I can sit down in front of the TV and watch it, as as you know some people like to do. Uh, I'll just take my normal seat. But it can be on. That's fine. Put it on. But like I don't. I have zero energy for them, Jeff. Like none. Like zero. It sounds like I can't you feel. You, I feel numb. Yeah, apathy yeah. is almost the worst. I thing feel completely apathetic. I said I love them, but I do not like them. I'm not, and I'm not even angry at them anymore. It's like, all right, man. See you next year, Packer. In it's like you met up with a KGB agent, and they slipped polonium two ten into your sweet tea, and it's eating you from the inside, and it's already done. <laughs> it's an obscure reference. <laughs> uh, no, I just. Uh, I can't get excited. I can't fake it. I can't say I'm excited. Like I've been damaged by this. Yeah, but you've watched games you weren't excited to watch before. Many Jets times. Games. But it wasn't good for me. I realized it's just not healthy. So like, why would I, why would I put myself through the ringer for a team that has no hope this year and get excited or upset or angry about like something that in the end will not make one iota of difference. Do you want them to like lose games, win nope. games, get I'm not, the draft no, no. pick? Like, I, what, I what? honestly don't think it matters what they do. They'll screw up whatever they get. So, so you just I, want them to beat the Dolphins then? That would be sweet. I would love for us to play spoiler. We play the Dolphins twice late in the year in Buffalo again. It'd be nice if we could spoil their hopes. I mean, the team is good enough. It could win. It could win any game they're in. But, you know, they'll probably lose most of the games they're in. But, yes, it would be nice if they won this week and swept the Patriots for the first time in – a century and it would be nice if they beat the dolphins twice and like cost them any chance at the playoffs. It would be nice to, if they beat Buffalo again. Sure. And there's a couple other games on the schedule. I wouldn't mind having, but like we're going to get flexed out of a Sunday night game in like two and a half weeks. And Against so two. they're playing the Colts. There's no doubt in my mind. They're going to flex jets Colts out of, there's some excellent games that week and they can't protect them all. So we're definitely getting it flexed out, and I'm I'm excited for that too. They got flexed. So they get, hold on, they, they got they got flexed out of the late slate this week to the early slate. Of course, it, I mean that's part of them because they're terrible, part because the Patriots are the team they're playing. <laughs> but yes, I agree. Well, do you want to move on to the games, Jeff? Well, I'm I, just... I actually want to. I want. Yeah. I, well, I, I at first I want to see if Jeff did the math this week. I have the picture saved, but I was more curious, Tim. <laughs> He's adding it up right now. I haven't I, I haven't added if you'd like to fact check my numbers. But you go I'm ahead. Sure you, you, have, you have a point to make. Make your point. I, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I, Tim just feels broken. So I feel bad for him. But I'm curious, like. Is it to the point where you're not even going to like blow your top at Rogers? Like you just don't care, so that won't even happen now. I don't know. Like I don't think any. Of the, I I don't blame him for but very much of anything that's going on right now. Like he's so far down the list of people that I would wag a finger at. So, but isn't this uh, all his yeah. doing? His entire no. team is his doing. No, I don't blame. Why, I don't, why isn't Sal the coach? Aaron Rodgers. 
Why is Devontae it's Adams on the team? Fault. Aaron Rodgers. Why was Randall Cobb yeah. on the team last year? I, they, I think they just signed Geronimo Allison. Why was the head care. coach neutered? Aaron Rodgers. Why couldn't they fire the other offensive coordinator that everyone knew sucked forever? Aaron Rodgers. Why did he spend so much time in the offseason, the in first Egypt. part of it, saying, um, you know, people just, we've got to... Uh, not be like so attention seeking and, <laughs> and be distractions was the word. And then the next 10 things he does from RFK to Egypt to everything is a fucking distraction. And he then he it. plays bad and blames other people. Well, and you're right. He's not of- horrible. He's not the worst. There's been a lot of the losses. He's not the reason they lost, but fuck man. Like, I don't know how he could be that far down on your list. I just, I look at, I, I don't hold him to account for many of those things. Um, I don't care if he goes to Egypt in the, in the, in the, in, during mini camp. I don't think that makes a difference. I, I, I don't care if he got Sala fired. Sala was bad before Rogers showed up. Like what great loss have we had here losing Sala? Like I don't, none of that really matters. I don't think he's making any negative difference. He's not making as many positive differences as I would have liked, but like, he still throws that ball and pushes it down the field in a way that I haven't seen Jets quarterback be able to do in like a decade. He so, doesn't though. If you look at his, if you look at his, spray he does chart, though. He doesn't though. If you look at his, spray compared chart, to what Wilson was, doing, sure, yeah, compared, compared to, to yes, compared to Zach Wilson, Tim, you're right. He's not. <laughs> and pushing. before him, Darnold. Like this is what I've got uh, to compare. No, no, listen, Dar- Darnold pushed the ball down the field. It was just to the other team. <laughs> I, like he's just not the problem. The problem is that the team lost some close games of their own doing, and now they're unraveling. And these things happen in the NFL. All right, I've seen it before. If you don't think I'm used to losing, you don't know that. Don't think I have a muscle memory for dealing with tragic losses for my team. Like you, you forget that I do. I'm, I'm very used to this. It's okay. I've decided this is a new way I'm going to cope with the struggle. Is that I'm just not going to let them make me upset anymore. I will. You, you, you know, I, I'm not going to be the prisoner of my own emotions. Well, yeah, because like think about how you behaved when you beat the shit out of the Patriots on a Thursday night. Yeah, I know. I know the Patriots. Yeah, and like when they throttle them this week, as they probably will, because the Patriots are real bad. I, I'm not going to get excited again. Like I'll be. I mean, that's nice. I'm glad they won. I hope that every team that plays New England always wins. But there's nothing to get excited yeah, about. So- and based on your Twitter feed, the rest of your football season is just going to be this like um, anti Tua, anti Josh Allen, surrogate, <laughs> yeah. surrogate. Well, I don't know if it, I'm, look. I didn't. You're the one. You're the one who's in, intimating, or sorry, that is inferring uh, you know, any reference to Josh Allen. I don't. It was, think the, I used it, was the, it was the first. It was the first thing Paul said to me too. That just t- Tim's well, now just evolved into taking shots at Josh <laughs> Allen. <laughs> Well, it shows where their where their where their heads at. Then I guess it's more about them than me. Your, your framing of that was clearly about Josh Allen. But if you want it to be, if you want it to be, but you but you wanted it to be because when I read it, it was the first thing know, I thought. I don't have a dog in this race. Even if you thought, that even you're, if you're, he like, thought he was being I pretty clever, th- but he wasn't. Everyone saw right <laughs> through it. Yeah, because even if Tim's like, I don't even think Josh Allen's the third best quarterback in the league, which I don't. But I'll, but all these people I watch football with and talk football with and I'm on the internet with say he's the second, third best quarterback well, in the league. So I'm going to have to make that clear in this tweet. Do not forget yeah, I mean, that in the preseason, when we ranked quarterbacks, he had Aaron Rodgers over Lamar Jackson. Do not forget that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, gonna but bet that can Josh, be forgiven as an instance of extreme excitement. Mm-hmm. I agree Lamar should be the favorite. Um, but after that tweet, I'm really tempted to bet Josh Allen today. Was I mean, like he's five, a six slight, one? but the, th- the thing is, he's also just a very slight favorite. Like he and Allen and Goff and Mahomes are all very close to each other. Like there's no, cl- it's going to be like last year where it's just going to come down to like the last, who has really good yeah, none uh, of this play the last couple of weeks. Yeah, like, it, it, doesn't, it, does, it doesn't, it absolutely does. That's, I mean, people are hanging on. You don't want to peak now. Oh yeah, well, it's hanging on Goff right now because he's strung together so many great games in a row. But he almost has to do it every week till the end of the season. Like, I don't feel like there's. He a has to have the Matt Ryan seat. He has to have yeah. the Matt Ryan seat. Exactly, and then the Lions need to be the one seed in the NFC, which they both yeah, definitely they could, could be. be. Absolutely, oh, yeah, yeah. but he has like he, a fifteen percent chance of that happening. But he has, like, but, like he has but he has, but he has no margin for error in the MVP race. 
because he's no, just never going to no. have the flash games that Lamar and Josh Allen are both going to have. And just the C minus effort the Chiefs give and Mahomes just wins every week. He would have, Goff would have to, like Josh Allen beats Goff on a tie. Yeah. Because yeah. there's just too much credit to the coordinator, to the, to the, the running backs. Yeah. Yeah. The Josh lines. Allen's oh, going to yeah. do it, you know, with this like hodgepodge of, of players. Um, I don't know if Josh could beat Lamar in a tie that would strictly be based on like a voters love liking to spread the award around. Yeah, there could but be if a, you're betting there could Josh, be apathy setting in. If you're be, betting because... Josh Allen, like that comes into your like as someone who's just based on like wanting to fade Tim, wanting to get in on some Josh Allen MVP. Part of my thinking is. You know, it's like the NBA, spread it around. Carl Malone here, David Robinson here. Like, okay, this guy we've thought is kind of worthy for two, three years if he holds up with that receiving core. Although the NFL doesn't do that. And, and, right? the, like and, 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 the, and the NBA awards, doesn't like, really do that either. Jokic has won three of the past four years in the NBA. Yeah. Well, like, he's in this day so and age, obvious. I think yes. the player who's the best statistically almost certainly wins the MVP. Well, that's why Lamar would be the um, Lamar could be the Jokic of this. I don't think Mahomes is going. I mean, they go fifteen and one or whatever, maybe, but he's just not like he's regarded. It's, it's even a dumb argument. He is the best, but he's just not like. Yeah, Mah- Mahomes is. I think what you're trying to point out with the MVP is what happened to LeBron in like the mid aughts, where he was very clearly the best player, but he was he wasn't having the best statistical seasons. So people are like, ah, so let's give it to someone else. That's what it feels like the Mahomes zone is right now. Yeah, yeah, the award is for the player games. who's had the best season. It's for the player who's having the best season. It's it's a, it's a one year award. It's not a. I, I get, overall, I, I get that, but but all things being equal, a lot of these times that you judge the player against themselves and what they've previously done, which is a great boost for Lamar, because this is the best season that he's had so far, and he's already won two MVPs. Yeah, with Mahomes, if he wins it, three, it, but, it's but, kind but, of over. It's there's no really no debate. If he wins three, like the, the debate between him and any other QB not named Patrick Mahomes. Kind of over, but that, in that, terms of active but, that, but that but that isn't how anyone judges quarterbacks. They judge quarterbacks on playoff wins and Super Bowl wins. Like, well, until neither it, of them have the, I, 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 I understand that, but, but that that so keeps the MVPs them. are the next play. He is this generation's Manning. Like we've got multiple MVPs and multiple. I agree, and he hasn't had the playoff home playoff yeah, no, losses. I, I I agree with you. And I mean Manning, but like we're also old enough to remember when people called Manning a loser who would never win the big game. Like after Absolutely. losing to the Chargers or Michael Turner and Billy Volick and shit. I agree with so, you in the way that Mahomes is like today's Brady, then uh, then Jackson is today's Manning. I, I does that make does that think. make Josh Allen this generation's Philip Rivers? Maybe, but who's Big Ben? Josh can get in there and get the Big Ben man. Yeah, but ben, but ben got his early. I, maybe Ben's kind of like Joe Burrow. Maybe, maybe Josh no. could be the Philip. Josh, yeah, the- right now, Josh is Philip Rivers. Right now, but he's way better than Philip Rivers. But in terms of yeah. that hierarchy, he is. And then who gets to be the Eli Manning, like the 500 quarterback who's going to come in and win two bowls? Is it Miss Stafford? <laughs> maybe uh, Stafford's, Stafford's better than Eli, but Stafford's so good. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that's enough about the MVP. Let's, let's recap last week. We'll get into the games to talk about the games a little bit more. Tim wins the week. Nine and five for Tim to get him back to 500 for the year. Congratulations. 50 and 50. The coin was seven and seven and remains three games up on Tim at 53 and 47. I was six and eight, so I'm 10 games under at 45 and 55. Jeff, you were five and nine. By my numbers, you can recount that if you'd like. Uh, 43 and 57 for the year. We all won our super locks last week. So, Barry Horowitz to all of us. I'm six and one on super locks. Jeff is back to three and three. And Tim, you are two and five. And you won your teaser for the second straight week. So, you're two and five, 28 and 142. One more teaser win, and you're back in the black, pal. Great win, Tim. Seems like all of the bad voodoo that my favorite team is having. is resulting in me just giving just nothing but winners out here on the show. So I guess that's good news for you, the fans. I thought there'd be more to that. All right, let's get to the games. But first, I want to let you know that 
If you sign up at Underdog right now with code Mayo, there is a free pick bonanza, depending on the day of the week you want to play, because basketball is back. So we have some Victor Wembenyama, like one, two, three, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. You get a free pick with him if you want it. You get a Stafford free pick for Thursday if you want it. Dak Prescott free pick for Sunday. These are great additions to any Underdog entry that you put together. And of course, I always give away my finalized picks on the Saturday show, and they'll be available in the Mayo Media newsletter. So please, go to Underdog right now. Right now, download the app, use code MAYO, get a deposit bonus of up to 1000 bucks, and take advantage of these free picks. They don't last forever, although by this calendar, they do last forever. So just sign up whenever you want. Underdog, code MAYO. Thursday night football, get that Stafford free pick in you, Jeff. But I, oh, we, we'll do it at three on the show. I see it down to two and a half now. I was waiting for it to drop. But Minnesota at the Rams. The Rams are three-point dogs at home, and this is moving towards the Rams. I don't understand this at all, Jeff. I want to make the Vikings my super lock. What am I missing with this besides Cooper Cup being back? Is he worth like seven points on the spread? Which, like the Rams haven't been good. The Vikings have been. Yeah, I'm not really certain. This one's been tumbling hard. When you guys did the show on Sunday night, was this like three and a half even? I, I think it was It was three or three and a half, but I was, I was surprised. I thought it would be like five. Is there injuries on Minnesota that I'm not um, no. familiar with? I don't think so. Nothing that I've like. I really like. I really, really like the Rams. Here. Why? That? Why though? I think Minnesota just went through a twelve round complete uh, knockout fight with a rival in a huge game, and then have to turn around on a super short week, travel halfway across the country, and play the Rams. I just think it's a bad spot game for the Vikings. I think it's a good spot game for the Rams, um, and therefore I think, and particularly with the, if we're getting three on the show. I think you got to take the points. I think the Vikings, who are obviously proven themselves to be a very, very good team, are going to be reeling a little bit off of what is both emotionally and physically quite a battle that they went through. And then turn around a super short week. Yeah, I play on the road. I got to say, I like, I like the Ram. Oh, I like the Rams here. I think that's got to be the play for me. I understand. I, I understand that narrative behind it of you know an emotional loss. You put everything into a game. Now you turn around on a short week. The team's getting one of its two big receivers back. Puka was actually activated from injured reserve today as well, but it doesn't look like he's going to play in this Thursday night game. But then I just look at watching these teams, Jeff, and then looking at the stats for these teams and what they do well versus what they don't do well. Well, the Rams don't play defense. That's a problem against the Vikings, who don't have an amazing offense, but it's good enough to take advantage of shitty defense. And they can't block going up against a team that just gets pressure in your face the entire time. Like, I think Minnesota routes them. I was going to say, I believe history has probably been very kind to the obvious better teams laying these short numbers on Thursday nights. Um, but we have no stats to back that up. That's just a feeling we're going with. And I like it. Yeah, no, I feel like the you just want to play the the better well, team. Well, the last time Jeff gave a Thursday night stat, you jumped all the way down his throat about teams coming off of overtime. And I uh, so now he's a little gun shy about giving out stats for Thursday night games. Well, no, he, that was an actual stat. <laughs> this is literally just my perception. So there's two very different things. Are I they? don't remember what that was, but... Uh, it was something dating back to, like, 1984 or something. That a no, team, it was the that third, a team no, who was... comes off overtime coming into a Thursday night game. Yeah, overtime before Thursday night. Now, there's a big enough sample size there for me. Listen, I'm the guy, Pat, that had Jacksonville as my super lock last week going on my own personal... Um, I will ride or die Jacksonville in that second, like, London game. We did it last year with Buffalo. We did it this year... With uh, whoever they beat the shit out of on the, Sunday morning. The, the Patriots. Were you sweating that early when the Patriots yes! got up? Because <laughs> it was going to ruin my whole day. Yeah. Oh, You get some Jamichael, was, ha yeah. Jamichael Hasty in your life. You're like, oh, no, this has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> I'm taking Minnesota. It's just a way too small a number for a team that's like the decidedly better team. I could be getting got. I don't even know if this is. It's only going to be some real money because it's Thursday night and I love a good TV game. But other than that, I don't want to call it a real bet. I think I am going to bet this hurt. It's the number one defense against the number 28 defense. Like that's that alone is just such a huge discrepancy. And, and yet the line keeps moving towards. Listen, the, there, there are the, lines that the, move, Rams. the line moved towards the Browns all week last week. 
Like that, and the Browns were probably the right side of that. They, they game, probably weren't. They were down twenty-one to seven. The they entire lost by game. seven. They lost by seven, and and that can be attributed to a special teams touchdown from the the Bengals. To, I don't to, know. The to, to open the, right the day, side. they were down by two touchdowns the entire game until garbage time. Just saying. I think they were probably the right side. They were never. There was never a moment in that game where they were actually within covering the spread because then they took the opening kickoff back. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You take that away, you know. Yeah, if you take if, the if, you, if you take away plays that happen in the game, then Jeff uh, teams a freakish can cover. special teams play. Yeah, you, know, you they cover the number. I don't know why we're fighting about this. I just don't. I, I, I don't. I don't know what the Browns did to, to be able. If the Bengals got to four, the Bengals got to twenty-one points. We'll take that away. So they would have actually had to play yeah, defense. Bengals are, a tra- Bengals are a trash team. I'm tired of them too. The, the, the Bengals are the tired. epitome of average I, this year. They are so overrated. I, I don't want to hear any more about how good the Bengals are. Who are telling you, like, what are you on, Bengals Reddit? Talking, it's no different than these wackos. I mean, I, one of the things that I really like about doing the power ranking show, Jeff, is I get to interact with, like, real fans with of teams, where I don't really, when we're usually talking about fantasy or gambling or whatever. And not that people are objective about those, but they have a more rational thought process, even if their biases come into play. With very subjective power poll tears when talking about teams you get like the real freaks out of everywhere arguing about like one spot and subjective power rankings and it's very clear they've only ever watched their own team and they always preface everything being like hey i'm not a homer but and then they tell me why you know minnesota is better than kansas city i did not appreciate you having the chargers behind the broncos Okay. I actually didn't want to say it, but you teed me up like just with that. I well, the, Bron- the Broncos can score touchdowns. Yeah. They don't just kick field goals every time. That is and then uh, have their coach lose his cool and his and their team correspondently lose their cool. We'll get to when we talk about the charge. I think Jimmy Harbaugh. Uh, uh, cool. Also, Jim also, Jim also, also that it, team last night. in fairness, I didn't have the Chargers behind the Broncos. I had the Broncos four spots behind the Chargers. The end of that game, the way he behaved when the pass interference call wasn't made, and then on the play before he was yelling and screaming and running around. I, I just think his behavior was, a, we melted down at the end of that game, and so did the Chargers. Uh, I thought he was justifiably upset with both calls, but um, you can't <laughs> he put was both, the refs yeah, in those positions. He should have been positions. very upset with the PI that, you know, you could have got on a step ladder and you couldn't have caught. Yeah. Well, it could have been holding. Well, but holding. yeah, no, listen, whatever. Yeah, yeah, fine. Sure. Hardball, law school. I um I like sort of how my team goes about things. There's like uh not Oh look, I'd moments. rather how you, I'd rather how your team goes about things than the way my team goes about things. Like it wasn't perfect and there were flaws and some old habits came up, but I know that as a functioning coaching staff and organization, we're going to figure that out. So uh, maybe over a week, maybe over time, but we'll figure it out. So, round in Minnesota, except for Tim, who was taking the Rams at plus three. Yeah. All right. Let's get to Sunday. Arizona coming off a short week, taking on presumably Tua and the Dolphins. Three is the spread in this game. Tim, do you think we see Tua? I I would lean towards yes. I think, yeah. I, think I haven't read a single report to pour cold water on it. We're late enough now that, like, if it, if it probably wasn't going to happen, either – reporters or coaches or somebody uh, would have probably tried to downplay it. So I, at the moment, I would say yes. But like the Cardinals have the best quarterback on the field. Um, I know the cards had this historically have not been great recently coming off wins. They've been awful. Uh, they're, coming they're off not, a win. <laughs> they, they, re- they really have been. And this is a short week. And this is, you know, a, a pretty lengthy road trip. Although, you know, being outside in the heat is not that big of a deal for a team that plays in Arizona. Um, all my instincts make me want to take the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are up and down a better team, but I think Tua coming back does change the equation enough that Mike McDaniel, who only has one gear and is only good in one very specific spot, should be able to be good in this specific spot. And the Dolphins are like what one in five against the spread, and that that doesn't seem like that's going to continue uh, at pace. So my heart tells me and my brain tells me you really should take the Cardinals. They've got to be the right side. But I'm just going to play a hunch and take the Dolphins here. Not, no confidence in it. But just, I guess the Dolphins are the right side, even though they're the, the they're not the better team. 
I agree with Tim. I just think Tua back. I think, weirdly enough, we're just going to see the Dolphins that we expected coming into the year, Jeff. Which is a better team than uh, this Arizona team, which you just watched, which isn't all that good. Yeah. Uh, there's very few things they could do. Impressive work by Jonathan Gannon on some of those things defensively, but at the same time, Herbert was able to move the ball with no targets. I've just been horrified at the job Mike McDaniel has done the last month. But that's only about his fashion, though. No, no, no but like, good, because no, Cam and I, uh, Cam Pat, and I, come on. Cam- Cam and I, you know, laid out a very strong case there on Sunday night. Why he's probably done the worst job of any coach in the league. This I, I don't. Go I, ahead. I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but over the last few years, the amount of quality play, competitive play we've seen out of backups with perceived, um, like smart offensive coaches, it's a long list. It's not a nitpicking, cherry picking list. It is a considerable list. I'm horrified at what they managed to do, how he can't even find those guys targets. He can't even drop easy plays, how he still cowers in third and short, fourth and short. That being said, like from the moment Tua was still alive after that hit this year, I had no doubt in my mind he's going to return. It's actually the reason I love Tua, despite what people think, because the guy's willing to die. He is he has accepted in his mind, right? Like uh if he dies, he dies. If I die, I die. Like he is willing to die on that field. He doesn't even want to put one of those guardian caps on that the league practically created for him. Um, he he also fashion forward wants to look good when he's gonna uh, die because it's gonna happen. Unless he's going to die out there. He's going to get rocked again, be it this month, next month, next year. That's inevitable because he he is like he just loves ball. And um, the Dolphins are going to rally around their dude who wants to die for them. And the same way they rallied around their dude for 12 minutes who uh, didn't want to lower his window. So they'll show up. I don't know for how many weeks, but they'll show up for this one quarterback who's gonna die for them is gonna play and they'll rally for that all right so we have miami 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 and the coin is going with arizona in this game atlanta and tampa bay congratulations on your guys's atlanta bets to win that division because it is not looking great for the buccaneers right now evan's probably no. gonna be out two to four weeks godwin done for the season spread is flipped from minus three for the bucks to Minus two and a half for the Falcons with all the injuries sustained on Monday night. It was going to be a short week anyway, but now missing your two top targets. Do you think, Jeff, that they can do a good enough job? Can Baker be good enough to piece this together? And obviously the offense isn't going to be as explosive as it once was, but can they keep this together? I'm always impressed by Tampa. Like, I really am. Even, But um, no. I've kind of said no to them being able to do a lot of things. So I'll say no again, and that'll make their fans happy. I'm going to take Atlanta here. Uh, Tampa will be feisty, but their ability to compete is in big trouble, is in big trouble. Baker's great, great story. I don't know. Baker needing to go that deep down a receiver depth chart. It's not going to work out well. You're not a big Trey Palmer fan? Who's who else is there even behind Trey Palmer? Uh, Sterling Shepard will probably man the slot, or maybe it'll be Jalen McMillan. We'll get some more Kate Otten in our lives. They been that they actually functionally run a three running back rotation pretty well on Monday night. It's funny because they we saw a bunch of games like this, like like that Monday night game against the Ravens this week, Tim, where one team just jumped out to a big lead, then did nothing the rest of the game. Like the Jets yeah, jumped out exactly big. What the Jets did, the Patriots did it, the yeah. Titans did it. True. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins. Like, I don't know if the Dolphins had a big lead, did they? As big as some of the other no, teams you mentioned. Well, it, well, in a game where there was just no points to be had. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, yeah, Atlanta is in a great spot here because, of course, this is for the sweep. Uh, so, like, nothing is locked up by any means, but they probably have, like, an 80% chance to win the division if they win this game. 
Uh, so it's 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 really crucial, and it couldn't come at a worse time for Tampa to lose their two best receivers, and coming off a short week. Um, Todd Bowles not a very good coach; doesn't seem to make very good decisions. He was not a very good coach last night. There was no reason to have Evans in the game when he was that close to being injured with his hamstring on. It made no sense. That was just the, to play him down in the red that, zone. That, and then that, obviously that was, that was the one that you had the problem with. No, no, no. Well, that's the first problem because that's the first thing that went wrong. Then the second thing was having Chris Godwin in the game at all in uh, in a blowout. So like, there's just two terrible like just just thinking on autopilot decisions. Like you're not really thinking things through. And it costs the Buccaneers dearly. And if they lose this game, it's going to really put a tremendous strain on their chances to win the division. So all that being said, Atlanta is a very capable team of screwing this up and making terrible mistakes. And if this game ended up 33 to 14 because Atlanta threw two interception touchdowns or something, wouldn't be shocked in the least. But the Falcons can sort of smell that the division is theirs to be had. And I think there's, I think he's going to reach out and grab it. So I'm going to take them. Yeah. I'm going to take Tampa plus two and a half. I think if I'm going to bet this, I'm going to wait until later in the week. Cause I think that the spread might get even bigger here because there's not a lot to go on with Tampa Bay, but maybe they rally around their, their fallen comrades, Jeff and, Tim kind of laid out the scenario how I feel about Atlanta almost every week. When it seems like it's going to go really well for them, it just goes the other way because they fuck it up. I feel like they had done that a lot less this year. Um, In the fuck-ups that they would have normally happened, they actually managed to win a lot of those games. Last week, I wouldn't really put on it. It kind of um, got out of hand for them, and it was not the coin flip game that they had been playing all year. But this would allow them to sweep Tampa. They'd go 4-0 and in the division with playing the Goobers <laughs> to go one more time. And that would be, in my opinion, a nearly impossible task to overcome. Uh, Atlanta, I'll lay the two and a half. I'll probably bet it. I do want to litigate this Godwin thing for a second because we were talking about it in the studio before you guys jumped on the line. And I'm of two minds of the situation. Now, in retrospect, knowing what has happened and knowing what the game situation was uh, in this come, like the quote unquote comeback, they still needed two scores in order to come back. I thought they were going to cover the spread though with a late touchdown to cut it within three. But if you ask Chris Godwin, whether he wanted to be out there or not, Jeff, what do you think he would have said? I have to plead a little bit of ignorance because the charger game had started. Fair. So they were, they were down two scores and there was how much time left a minute. Yeah, it was down like inside yeah. a minute now. They, they had just recovered an onside kick. kick every every league. star receiver in the league is on the field there. Yeah, that's I that. Think. That's the thing. Like I I get, I get you can crush Todd Bowles, and looking at the situation just from the outside looking, it's like yeah, of course you don't put any of your good players out on the field, but they still felt like they had a chance to come back. So why wouldn't he be out? But there? they Lamb, they Jefferson, didn't. Chase, like you name the team, they're down ten with the ball inside midfield with around a minute to go. Those best players are not down on by the two bench. scores, but down by two scores where you'd have to get yeah. another on second onside kick. Well, they just got Ten one. They, they wanted to ride some mo. What I mean, you have to get a second one, and you've already uh, lost listen, I, your I, top I, receiver I, in the I, game. I, 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 like, I, just, I hear. I hear. You. I'm not I, arguing. I'm not arguing result. Like you're I, making you, a great camp, Tim. The case you're making, it was grave, and it was. I agree. The win probability, I'm not even arguing with. My only comeback to it is, I believe. Every high end player you're thinking wouldn't be on the field in that situation. I'm here to tell people I actually believe all of those players would have been on the field in I, that situation. And I agree. So if there's, and listen, you can kill Bulls because he shouldn't have been in there, sure. But he's not alone in playing his best players in that sort of situation. It's sort of like a league. Listen, this isn't, they're not trying it for the flag football team, it's professional football. These guys want to be out there. This is how they got to this point. You think Godwin would have been happy if he had to watch from the sidelines? He would have been pissed. Yeah, but you pay coaches to make those decisions. So the Should players Baker don't have, have been in there? Yeah, like why no, was Baker? Why so. was Baker in the game? But every, I'm just saying every I don't think he should have been. started down ten, more than half a minute on the clock on the north side of midfield. I believe every starting quarterback, every starting receiver is still on the field around the league. He should have been off the field when they were down by by three scores. Like it should never have come to that because he maybe, should have already maybe been you're off. Right. The, they shouldn't should have, have already back. been gone. Maybe, but but if he I but agree. if he but if he wasn't off the field when they were down by three scores, he wasn't. He was definitely not going to be on the field after they've recovered the onside kick. 
I I agree with you, but, but the argument is that he should have been off the field when they were down three scores in the fourth quarter it, when they were, when the game was over. Additionally, the, it, it was. Listen, you're you're right. No, I'm I, I'm team, saying that I you're right about right. this, but the reality of the situation is this is what teams in the NFL yeah. and coaches uh, well, I don't in disagree. the NFL do. I don't the, the Evans thing is weird though. Like Evans hurt himself and reaggravated his hamstring. Like he's the same guy who caught like, the first touchdown. His hamstring going to get like it was his hamstring going to get. Better? No. And they but, said on the but, broadcast, well, they were just going to use him in red zone spots. Like, no, you don't do that with somebody who has already got a sore hamstring. You don't play him until he's ready to go. Because no, but, 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 but Mike Evans is, is but Mike Evans, but Mike Evans is the king of playing through these injuries at all time. Like that's what he does. And, well, again, and, listen, and he got his separation. Why have a coach? Why even have a coach then if you're just not going to make any decisions? Why are you paying this guy millions of dollars to just stand there and shrug? Like his job is to make tough decisions and smart. well, your team doesn't have a coach and it's not working out for you guys. Your quarterback makes your decisions. Well, again, I don't know that that's true. I mean, we don't really have a coach. I will agree with that, and it's not working uh, out. Anyway, the medical staff cleared Evans to play. Where you can be like, nah, sorry, Mike. Why don't you sit down in this for him? If you're, if his hamstring is so poor, you can only really use him in the red zone. So, you can't use him. But, but, that, but, that, but that obviously wasn't the case because he played every snap in the game until he but got they hurt. They kept saying they were, he was only going to really be well, targeted they, or used in well, the that, red zone. I mean, that, that's like, great. They, they, not making that up. He I mean, obviously heard that from the coaching staff listen, in their meetings. Troy, like, Troy, where Troy, they Troy, that I, I, I think Troy Aikman doesn't really spend any time doing anything besides going to the tanning beds at this point. I don't believe that's true. Actually, he's become a very good color commentator. And yeah, no, they're uh, great, but yeah, here's... when he's saying that, it's because that's what he was told. Like, if that's yeah. the do, 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 do you think really that is? do you think that maybe that they're leaking maybe some fake information to the announcers? No, I don't. You don't. You, I don't. Do you think they're just no straight up to, with them? There's no one to benefit from that. There's no way to benefit from that. No. Oh, Question: th- He was he did not practice coming into the week. They cleared him to play. They said he would play. They said he wanted to play. And Mike Evans he has a long mean. history of playing through injuries. That's what he does. Well, congratulations! Your season is over now because you just. Well, it's stood not there like, like he's a, it's not like he's out for the season. No, but he's going to be out for like four weeks. Great, two to four weeks. Uh, other than Buccaneers week fans, I've back. gotten the Smart. I've gotten the impression like it's more so fantasy people who are upset than like NFL people. It reminds me a lot of the Welker in the week 17. Remember when he got hurt and Belichick played all the guys? Yeah. Belichick had Grudkowski out there on extra points, bro. Like, we lost. That's just arrogant. Brandon Stanley got fragile. Mike Williams hurt before he was broken. A cost broken you a potential super- Yeah, but he cost probably, you yeah, but, yeah, but that playoff run. Yeah, but that's not Brandon Staley's fault. That's Mike Williams fault for running the wrong route. That's how he got hurt. Well, different, but uh, whatever. Mike Williams constantly runs the wrong route. I, I heard I've the heard Chargers were interested in trading back for him. I'd be delighted to give you a, know, there's a, a lot sixth of guys. round pick for him. Have him. I, He's yours. The Chargers. Remember, how, remember when Homer got that trampoline from Krusty, and then it was no good, so he tried to give it back to Krusty, and Krusty told him, you, you guys gave driving. him a you I feel like that's what would have happened if I tried to drop Mike Williams back off at your, your facility. You just keep on driving. Buddy, you'd have to pay the piper, I think. You guys gave him a pretty serious contract. It includes a million dollar per game bonus. Good thing we went and traded for another high paid receiver. That's a real smart team we got over but there. But I believe a lot of rec- lot of geniuses. The receiver market seems like it's pretty intense. Uh the Chargers probably could try to trade for maybe a Slayton or a Williams or just uh a body. The Chargers they don't need, need to body. do that. The Chargers aren't going anywhere. Why waste it? Why? Why not save the kitty well, until next year and like really? Because the AFC is so bad, the Chargers could absolutely. Well, I don't, make Pat. I don't think I'm not talking about a second or third rounder. Like I'm going no, really. Mike down Williams this would chain. be like a sixth round pick. Yeah, go. I'm going down this chain to like where it's a fifth or a sixth rounder, and you're not wrong. I think the Chargers need a like a guy who can stretch the field, and he hasn't played all year. But they're gonna get DJ Chark back next year or next week. Um. I don't know, but that's the receiving core. The guys who were there playing last night, those are the receivers minus Quinton Jack, yeah. Quinton, Quinton Johnston. So people are like, oh my God, their receiving core was so banged up. I'm like, uh, actually, Darius Davis was out too, but <laughs> I, like, they could use it. And I don't blame them. Like, I think, listen, there were moments last night with a love Keenan Allen, but the Chargers went from 100 million over the cap. They're about 80 million under it next year. And Another draft, a free agent signing. They'll build out that room. They yeah. will build that, out that room. That's why I'm saying you don't have to go trade for someone right now. 
Yeah, but Mike Williams will literally cost you nothing okay. other than the fact that three teams apparently want him. So it's a mini bidding war for enough, like, of, of, um, like, I don't know what the highest the Jets will get. But you are desperate to buy, and we are desperate to sell. Not only we're desperate to buy, not a chance. The Steelers, though, might be the team most interested in a receiver now. The Bucks? Yeah, maybe. The Chiefs, obviously, too. Uh, you know, the internet's already saying Cooper Cup's going to go to the Chiefs. Really? That would be terrifying. I don't think it makes a difference. The Chiefs don't lose games without receivers. They wouldn't lose games with Cooper Cup. They don't lose. Ever? They'll never lose again? Well, I'm saying never, but like, I think this team has got a really good chance of not losing a game this regular season. You think they're going to go 17-0? I don't think they are, but I'd say they're like like 50 50 to do so at this point okay maybe man. slightly less than that maybe like 45 percent. i'll offer you money 50 50 you can make no, a bet. I'm not, i don't I, I don't want to i'm just I'll saying I plus think, 120 no i just don't i'm just saying this chief's team is is set up in such a way that they don't seem like they're gonna with having the best defense in football and the best quarterback no i'm not set up to really lose i'm sure maybe maybe they'll stumble into one here or there but i don't it's not going to happen very often they'll stumble in they lost to the raiders last year no, this team is better than last year's team you really think that? I'm, they will like a stumble factor of two or three them. that's all okay i actually think for them and their quest for a three-peat i don't even think you want to be flirting with an undefeated season I'm not saying they're losing this week. See, I kind of want it to happen, right? Because one of the things I get to hope for in my life now, now that Mahomes has three Super Bowls, is that he could maybe get to seven. And if he could get to seven and have a perfect season there too, it would just it it would be so great to like help shelve Tom Brady to the sidelines and he'll become like our Dan Marino, where people talk about how he used to be the greatest player of all time till someone came around. Like this is now beginning to burgeon on the horizon. But, But go ahead. Let's do this. You get rid of jet sadness. You become a Chiefs fan, an I honorary Chiefs fan. No, I, I like couldn't it. do that for I, like it. I couldn't I like do it. that to do Huff. it. You'd get to watch a team that doesn't lose, a winning team. Go after everything Brady's built, <laughs> everything Brady and Belichick have built. You jump on. Please jump on. Well, the Patriots are already doing a pretty good job trying to destroy everything that Belichick. Well, we'll get there in a minute, but this is, I think you deserve (laughs) to have a team that wins. I'm wearing red and and yellow. I don't, I only, I only have my team, but if the Jets can't win, I do hope the Chiefs win this year. And I do hope they win them all. So when will you declare yourself? Are you, this is a, you're officially declaring you're supporting the Chiefs. To win the Super Bowl. I I am hoping that the Chiefs, not only did I pick them to win at the start of the year, which would be an immense amount of credit for me, I am indeed hoping that they win the Super Bowl. And I hope they go undefeated. Are you cheering for them? In every game that doesn't in any way hurt the Jets, yes. Okay, I'll, t- I'll take that. I will take that. Tim, congratulations, Kingdom. You've got Tim. How do you think Huss is going to feel about that? Well, this is what I said. I didn't want to give a full-throated endorsement because I know Huss would not appreciate that. I think you should be the Liz Cheney of the Chiefs season. <laughs> <laughs> and you should be out there stumping everywhere. Well, that would be, though, if I was like out there stumping for the Patriots or the Dolphins. If I was out there saying Mike McDaniel's the right man for the job, that would be me doing a Liz Cheney impression. Next Jets head coach, Mike McDaniel? Can't wait to hear how innovative and great he is when he signs there. No, I don't. I do not want an innovative head coach. I really don't. I want the Dan Quinn style of someone who could just be a serious person to bring adult behavior into the room and hire smart coordinators. That is I what I would love want. for your next coach to wear capri pants. I, I'm sure you would. I'm sure Rafael uh, Nadal is available. York. Like, I don't want Cliff, Cliff, uh, Cliff Kingsbury. I want the type of coach that will hire a Cliff Kingsbury to be my offensive coordinator. That's the type of t- uh, coach that I want. Uh, I'm sure they'll hire some very, like someone like Ben Johnson, who's a good play There's caller. There's no I, way Ben Johnson is taking your meetings. Well, I think he probably, probably would. 
I, the Jets. That's going to be it's a New York. It's a head coach job. Uh, no, no one wants he to turn down coach the Washington. Jets, man. Yeah, but it's the Jets. You think you want to, anyone wants to coach the Jets, especially after Rodgers leaves and they have no one? Uh, well, we'll see. I think that there would be no shortage of people lining up for that. You, job. you might, you might oh. get, you might get your wish. They might get Jim Caldwell. Maybe Marvin Lewis is available. So, I would take, I would take either of those two coaches. They're serious I, people. Marvin Lewis I agree. Is not a there'll serious be no. But there he hires be. good coordinators. Yeah, you might but get Tony. Get be Paul like the Washington did when they brought the corpse of Joe Gibbs back. Get Tony Dungy to be your coach. I thought you were going to say bring back Rex Ryan because I, I could I, I could live with that. You know what? If they're going to be bad, give them Rex Ryan. That would actually be a lot of fun. Rex was the best coach we ever had in my lifetime. I mean, outside of Parcells, I suppose. Tim, you realize bring him back. there will be no shortage of people who want the head coaching job, but of the high end quality candidates. Your organization, your owner is carrying such a stink. People with options might be like. He's going to have to do what Jerry did when he hired Bill Parcells. He's going to have to agree to a truce. Yeah, but no one wants to work for fucking Nepo baby Woody Johnson. Like, Uh at least Jerry made his own money. I mean, that's only true. People go around saying that that's true. I mean, I don't, I don't know that anybody has said, oh, I won't work for Woody Johnson because of the way in which he inherited wealth. Well, like, he's, he's not a serious care. person. Like he makes re- irrational decisions because, you know, like someone's like, hey, here, I have billions of dollars. Like, what does he know? Nothing. I don't know. I mean, what? what I, is, wish I, was in, I wish I had billions of dollars. Listen, I wish, I, 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 to this show, I, 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 it would solve all my problems, I, wouldn't I, it? I wish someone would have given me billions of dollars as well, but they didn't. Because if I had billions of dollars, I would build that golf course. And I would build uh, well, that you, dream home. And well, then, well, then yeah, I, have, I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if you had billions of dollars, but it was only two billions of dollars, and you built that golf course, you'd have zero billions of dollars left. <laughs> <laughs> then in a year's time, I'd have a ton of money just from the revenue. What revenue? You still haven't... You, you, said you, you said that you were going to give out free memberships to people who helped you build it. Yeah, but it's open 24-7, 365. So there's only so many free memberships you're giving out. Yeah, but you still have to keep up the upkeep of the golf course. You still have to pay for that. It's fine. It pays for itself in volume. Yeah, but buddy, you're going to feel the loss when you've got only fat people can golf hour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, C- Cust will have conveyor belts put in like they have at the airport, so you don't have to walk also, to the holes. I also thought about it. One of the other things that we could do with the indoor golf course is that I could host big PGA or live events at my indoor facility. And I could do it at a time of year that you can't host them in this area any other. Like I could have a big, massive January event. And people would come, and it'd be lots of money. And people would go to the event. Well, you, and you, then, you, then, hold, then hold, hold on. A, a, as as my dealing with Liv, winner, I've dealt with Liv, and the reason that they go to these golf courses is because why, Tim? Well, it's different. Here. The golf courses pay them to be there. That's why they go to those golf courses. Like, so there's the even more money out of your pocket. And the merch tent that I'd have. Oh, okay. Like, hold, hold on. So. Where are you going to put the fans? How much bigger do you need to build this facility to facilitate the fans to be there as well? No, nowhere. No, no, no bigger. The fans just fit on the, on the, on the property. So, so our initial estimation of how large this facility was going to have to be is actually like double what we thought it was going to be. No, it's exactly the same size. No, no different. Well, I assumed Unless it was just... you spoke about it. Every hole was its own building. Well, maybe every hole or maybe like every couple of holes are combined into their own building. That's fine, too. That'd be cool. You know, what? this, 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 this hole, sounds like an idea of someone whose grandfather made like $50 billion and gave it to them. I wish I, I, wish I was in that situation. <laughs> Tim, you need a Saudi prince or something. The ones that email you and you send them 500 bucks. You're so gullible. Yeah. Ask yeah, him. Yeah. yeah. I'm no, just saying. Tim, Tim would, would never. Have a big Tim, golf Tim, event there. And... Tim wants to send them the money, Jeff. But he doesn't know how to do it online. So he's very insulated that way. It's very smart. It would work. And like people would go to this event and like you could have it at like in the middle of the night, too. You get a prime time golf on. Because you could play it at night because my course is underground and fully lit. Underground. I forgot that it was underground. <laughs> well, it could be. Or it could be above ground. Either way, it's got you know full lighting and you could have oh. it during the day and the people would go or during the night and people would go. And it would have great ratings and people would go and then you make you make all that money back in like three years just by having and the event. You could there. have so so many ancillary things like a bingo hall. 
and like the best little snack bars all over the place. Yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you want to have stuff like that? That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is. This idea. None. So bad. None. <laughs> No, you just you're just upset you didn't come up with it. That's what it is. I mean, the, it, it almost feels like you're doing a Brewster's Millions type thing here. Where you <laughs> Brewster's after, at, billions? At, yeah, Brewster cuss billions where he ha- he's given a billion dollars and has to have nothing to show for it by the end of 30 days. I like that he also can have one of the dumbest ideas ever. You mock it, and then he claims you're just jealous <laughs> you didn't think of it first. I mean, I that's... Maybe that's what's going on here. Baltimore. At- did you see the M- Did you see the MRE we had this week, Jeff? It was so oh, good. It's it was- all disgusting. It was so good. This teriyaki rice with like fresh veggies in it. It was so good. You are such a character, my man. No, I'm serious. Like you went on and on about how oh, it's just like solid, like solid orange, like paste. <laughs> That has nutrients in it. It's like, no, What's, that's yeah. not what it, these it, things are. Yeah, it was. What's it was, Jared it was... say about it? He's got to prepare it. Yeah, well, Jared right. Jared actually had the other bowl of it. And Jared liked the first one. So, give you, Jared, give your reviews on the MRE so far that you've had to Look, eat along with Soup is Gus. whatever. Soup is powder. Like, even uh, this, you eat soup today that is still a powder, maybe. I don't, I don't know. The actual food. Solid food. Well, for those who subscribe to the newsletter, you've seen the video. And it every single one has been exactly like that. It just turns into this thick, like paste. It's and Tim said that it wasn't salty. The teriyaki rice. I'm here to tell you that's no. a lie. That's not true. It, it it's wasn't very salty. The, the, the other two. The other two were far saltier than this one. Yes. That, that doesn't mean it's not doesn't salty. Ch- yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't notice it personally. That kind of maybe should speak to your diet just a little bit, I think, if you didn't find that salty. No. Tim, they wouldn't even serve this stuff in soup kitchens. Oh, stop it. I mean it's that. Stuff. It's good it's stuff. Wh- I mean it. I mean you know, it. You know what I don't understand? I don't understand <laughs> smash burgers. I don't understand why Love people them. want these Love things. Love them. Like, why would I want my hamburger flattened out to like, it. with, like, it's like, it's like a McDonald's hotcake and then quote unquote crispy on the outside. I don't want a crispy hamburger. You, I want a thick, juicy hamburger that's cooked. What gets uh, crispy? Really like the edges. The, edges. the burgers are crispy. I don't want that. I, well, the edges of the burger meat is crispy. I don't want that. Why do I want my hamburger flattened down so that there's like no substance to it on the, the bun? Oh, like a double Ooh. patty smash is why way anybody, better why than all, like the thicker see, like look, one. See, everyone's all obsessed these days about the smash burger this and the smash burger that. But I don't want that. I want a real burger. Well, yep. I don't mind normal, but a lot of these places make these burgers that are just like way too. Bi- I prefer the smash. I prefer the smash. Oh, please! That yeah. that's yeah. delusional. Cus Absolutely, Cus, that's Cus delusional. Loves them thick. You know him. I want a real <laughs> hamburger that you can bite into, and like, like it isn't just like rolled out like a crap. No, I don't. I don't mind. Is that like are, I are we call, are, hold on? Are we calling them a crepe or a crepe? No, that's what I'm talking about. Like those flat pancakes. That's what these smash burgers. Oh, everybody on. wants smash burger this, smash burger that. Well, I don't understand why people. Why do people want? Where these is stuff? this coming from? By I the just way. don't understand. Yeah, but why what everyone happened? Seems, everyone seems obsessed with these days with the smash burgers, and I just want regular burgers. Okay, I, I have to. I have to inquire. Where did you hear about this first? Which one person told you this that you've now determined no, I've that seen ever- them around? Where? Where? I've where? Seen them, where? Like, a lot of. I'm in a asking lot of you burger where. places, they're doing, and I see this on cooking shows all the time. There's all these people doing smash burgers, and I yeah, don't. They're so get- much better. How can it be better to flatten out your ground beef to the point that it's just like so thin that it has no substance to it? Well, it's not that thin. You you have no depth perception of how thin it actually. Like it's thin, but it's not a crepe. What are you talking about? Yeah. The outsides are like super thin and crispy because they're so. The thin. very edge of it, sure, gets a little crisp on the grill, but well, other I don't. Than that, it's perfect. You know what? I want it like my quarter pounder, which isn't like that at all. Then why don't? Then why don't you just go order a quarter pounder? Oh, I forgot well, because I why because you can't go to it. McDonald's. Well, no, I can't go to McDonald's. I have a problem, and so I can't go there. Well, maybe you shouldn't be. Maybe, maybe you should. Maybe you should be eating a smash burger instead of a quarter pounder. Then this is so your I don't new reality. This though. is your. This is your new reality. You can't have, have the things you, you want. One? Have you eaten one? No. Well, then how do you fucking know? Because I see them all over the place. And I'm like, why so do I eat want one? 
Try one and then tell us how good it was. Oh, so this no, is from the same guy. That actually, did, hold no, on. Wait, hold on. I actually have had one. I take that back. I actually have had one. And, and it wasn't bad. And, and I and, remember thinking at the time, like, this doesn't make any sense. You remember you're, and you're, never, so get a double. You're the same guy that just gave the MRE a 9.5 out of 10. You, you don't like Smash I don't believe. So I don't believe I scored that MRE. Paul? To be fair. Paul? I've been around long enough to know that this seems like a ploy for Tim to get us to, <laughs> to buy, buy him <laughs> a smash burger. And I'm not taking the bait no, this year. I don't want that. This I don't want one everything. of those. I oh, be... this thing's horrible. Oh, air fryers. I would... Who would ever use those? Oh, my God. Thanks for buying me one, guys. This is the best I would thing be ever. Very di- I, would, I would be very disappointed if I was given a smash burger instead of Do a real burger. you like thin crust pizza? I don't mind it. Yeah, I don't mind thin crust pizza. But I don't think that's the same thing at all. I, just, I, I see where you're going. I don't mind it. It's fine. But I think if you try to smash burger, you'd be like, oh, that's pretty good. I, I guess I, I might prefer the other kind, but I could see why people like it. Like, Why I'm wouldn't pretty... I want a real hamburger if, if I'm going to have a burger? That you call, the fact that a quarter pounder from McDonald's to you is you, what you consider that's a like real hamburger. That's like the platonic firm. That's like is... the perfect firm form of a hamburger. It's like the idea. It's like the, the a smash I, I, burger I, isn't much fucking thinner than a, it's a lot fucking thinner. McDonald's. Otherwise, it, it, it's, it's, it's actually it's actually not burger. It depends on where you get it because most places where yeah, you like, can get it around here, like they're actually way thicker than a quarter pounder. Yeah, like a quarter. I'm sorry, to, like if your re- if your comparative is the quarter pounder, then you're just like in La La Land. Well, no, I mean, like you talk about a Five Guys burger. I'd rather have one of those than a smashed burger. That's almost a smash burger. No, it's not. It's not they so f- thin. I you guarantee you they smash on that grill. I guarantee you they not put the way. Those- no, not the way that these people like take meatballs or whatever and then like smash them down with that thing on the grill to make them so thin. You That's can no see different them. than the dude who just hats it thin or something. No, or it no, goes on the, the grill at a restaurant. The same thing. I don't understand why you're carrying water for smash burgers when you know they can't possibly be better than a real hamburger. You know why? Because people would actually be choosing those all the time, and they're not. Well, they seem to be. You seem to you. The whole point of this is you seem to be upset that people are choosing them more often. Well, I don't understand why anybody. Well, you just said you didn't know why people wouldn't do it, and then people are doing it. I don't understand it. Well, maybe you're a moron. Yeah, people all lost their minds. Your point of reference to what a hamburger should be. Is also ridiculous. <laughs> what is ridiculous? Like probably the most purchased hamburger I in like the world it. day I after day. The, mo- the most like, mass probably the most hamburger. Purchased. Like Pat, it's do you like want to the know most something? ideal form of one. When he was first talking about his ideal form, I thought he was referring to those like homemade hamburgers that are like really thick. Not yeah, a quarter listen, pounder here, here, from McDonald's. You know what the weird thing is? I don't like a thick patty on a burger. I want a thin patty. And I'd, I'd rather have like three tiers so I can put things in between them at the same time. They don't need uh, to be smashed. No, thin- but I, I don't like the super thick ones because I find, listen, I do like the medium rare, but I do find that you can leave it a bit, you know, if you don't want to overcook the outside, that they do get a little bit too rare on the inside for that type of meat that, you know, you make them a little bit thinner, they cook more evenly. Love a smash. It's truly, it's the optimal way these days. Optimal. The optimal way. Yeah. You've gone, <laughs> you've gone now complete heel turn on this to where like the only hamburger you'll deign to eat is a smash burger. This nope, is not mad- at all. Not madness. at all. Does but Jeff, does Jeff all, look is... like he's picky with what he wants to eat? Well, I would say he's being disrespectful of the hat. He's you won't even head. go to McDonald's to order the burger that go. you like the most. And all I you want to do is complain about second. other burgers. I would I'll also be going the like the contest um, is over. For any fact checkers out there, I just like to clarify I don't work at McDonald's, I don't flip the fries, I just went to a NASCAR race. And you I also you all that. it's not that you work there, it's just that you go there and cook the food when it's closed. Yes. Which, which yeah. is my It's called it's called a campaign. I know. It, it's it honestly this is it's probably the greatest thing he's done in ages for like good support. Since on getting his side. shot. Yeah, I guess since, since getting shot, but even more which so. It's a normal campaign thing that people I, used to do all the time. I completely agree, which is why I find it so fascinating that there's people like legitimately triggered. They're like, did you know it wasn't even really open? It's like, yeah, no shit, it wasn't open. Like, what the fuck and are I'll people give, talking about? <laughs> and equally, like, obviously, it didn't live for three or four days. This McDonald's picture might live for, like, oh, this McDonald's story is already on day three, which is crazy. And you can blame certain people for it. 
They're all insane. No different than when Kamala went into a gas station and bought Doritos. The other side freaks out about how yeah. staged it is. Like, who That's gives... Right. It's all it's all staged. Like the the thing I don't understand is you can't one side can't call the other side a bunch of morons and then be just like triggered out of their mind for three days about this. You need you need to have a little bit of self reflection on some of this stuff. And be like, These oh, things yeah. have to be staged. There's security concerns. I, I completely. In place. I compl- everyone know anyone who's reasonable knows that. <laughs> like yeah, I, I couldn't. Have, then people are like, oh, but this McDonald's had issues with like <laughs> I, I can't remember what it was like. It's like what? is wrong with you people <laughs> have you all taken leave of your senses like what's going on here now yeah, of what, course now, it's closed like, now what Jeff if Trump, what, what if, one of the tweets i sent out or i retweeted where it's like oh really i didn't realize that donald was what did the person say oh really i i thought donald was saving up his vacation and sick days for McDonald's <laughs> to run for president sorry i didn't realize now like, what come if, on man. I heard he was making smash burgers at McDonald's and they had to retrain him on how to do that because he loves smash burgers so much. McDonald's are smash burgers and Tim, I'll leave it at this. I am the I am the authority here because oh, I'm the really? meat taster. Yeah, because I don't put the toppings on. I just like the meat. So well, and you can clip that's, that that's and use true. that against me any way you want. But um, direct to the meat, smash burger, double smash burger, cheese, Nothing tops it these days. I still like my jalapeno play, putting the jalapenos on first and then melting the cheese on top of it to create a that, shell. That's so they a don't play. Move. That's it's the move. I yeah, like that too. That's, that's a smart idea. That's actually a really smart idea. There you go. You Next, can do it with banana peppers too if you prefer those, which I kind of do prefer them to jalapenos. To be perfectly sh- honest with you, sure, absolutely. A- any topping you yeah. really want. It's just if. It's hard well, to get not any topping. Like if you like tomato, you wouldn't want a piece of cheese to melt over top of the tomato. Why I don't not? think. Why, why not? It depends on because you like the whole point of having a tomato on a on a burger. You don't like tomatoes. You are not an authority no, on tomatoes. I don't. But the purpose of them or a piece of lettuce is that you want something cool and cold to counterbalance the hot richness of the burger. That's why you have cold uh, vegetables on a on a hamburger, right? Yeah. So if you melt cheese over top of the tomato, it becomes hot, and I think it kind of defeats the purpose. Of having that that tomato on the burger, lettuce is just there for crunch for people. Crunch and and like the no, cold no, like it's there texture. for crunch. Yeah, it is. No, it's there for crunch. Well, I mean, it, it, I mean that is a it is a part of it. It's texture. No, that's the part. But another part is also temper, the temperature. It's there for the crunch. That's why people like lettuce. I mean, on, on things. It's I mean, it's crunch. one of the reasons. No, it's the, one of the. It reasons. is. It is the reason. Okay, well, you keep saying that, but you have no evidence for that. It's I mean, you were trying to tell me about tomatoes assertion. for a guy who's scared of tomatoes. I'm not scared. Hey, look, but there's one person on this show who ate every single tomato he was served at uh, at, at the restaurant in Montreal. Another person who wouldn't try them. So you mean, are, don't are, criticize hold, 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 hold me about tomato you, eating. Are, you just said you're the only person on I believe I was there. I believe Paul was there. I believe Jared was there. I think they ate their tomatoes. I actually don't know what you folks ate. I was not focused on. Oh, what you people old read. main character cuss, not paying attention. The rest of us, uh, are just, were... the rest of us are just NPCs, aren't we? I did not say that you were NPCs. I'm sorry, I derailed this conversation, but just, I was thinking about it today again. It's like I saw Smash Burgers, and I was like, "Why would anybody want a Smash Burger?" Like, I'm sure the flavor is fine, and then the one time. I had it. I remember it being okay, but being disappointed that I wasn't getting the full bite that I should be getting with a regular cheeseburger. And I just don't understand it. I'm just, sorry. I just don't understand where you're getting these smash burgers where you think that they're thinner than patties at McDonald's. I mean, they are super they, they thin. They are. Crispy where, where, on the outside. Where, where, where did you get them at? Just okay, Let's run through this. When you had your smash burger, where'd you have it at? Oh, I mean, I don't I'm not remember. Gonna, you know, I don't. You know, I know. No, no, you know, I, know, I don't remember. I do know. No, because you never like fucking had it. The say the name of the place because it, it well, doesn't no, exist. I'm not going to. Commercial? I will tell you where. Once the show's over, I'll tell no, you. No, exactly tell us right where. now. Tell us where. Because no one's no, going to believe I'm you. Not, I, I'm not going you need to. You need to come up with time. To, yeah, why won't you say it? No, I'm just. I'm not going to say it. Why? I'm just going to say that I had one. And you don't want to promote the place? I don't know. No, you know, I don't like to talk about What's the difference? Just tell us. It's between friends. Not going to. People know we live in the Halifax. Area. Oh, great! I'm so just not gonna, I'm just they not probably they probably want to go to this place now because they heard Tim hates their burgers. No, no, it was it wasn't a bad burger. I just thought it would be better if it wasn't a smash burger. So, but then what happened in the last week? We were like, oh my I god! I've seen advertisements and everywhere. like I saw, 
I see, I watch cooking shows and I see advertisements on TV and stuff. And it's just like, it's one of these things that I had in my phone for a while to talk about on the show. Okay. And for whatever reason, Pat, it just occurred to me today we had to talk about it. I'm, yeah. I'm wrapping. Uh, this is literally, this is probably from YouTube shorts, videos. And he watched a couple. And now his <laughs> algo is sending him smash definitely burgers. TikTok. Yeah. And that's all this is. That's all this is. Tim, you're like, you really are like a Gen Z person. Just your entire take on the world is filtered through your TikTok algorithm. Well, I mean, those algorithms are really accurate. Is the thing, like for, it knows for, what, it knows, it knows, knows what I you want to it knows what you want to rage about. Yes, There's something I wanted to wa I wanted to watch on YouTube. I wanted to find it, but I didn't want to even search for it. And I'd rather not watch it than search for it, because then I worried that shit would just stay in my algo. So I'm just like, you know what? I'll take the loss. Yeah, not letting the algo get me. It, it's like my friend who sends all of us these reels on Instagram that we know we can't click on because the moment we click on it, we're going to see a whole bunch just like it. And you don't want that in your algorithm. You just no, don't. You don't. You really don't. <laughs> you really don't want that stuff. And then you no. can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah. And then it ends up in your, in the for you <laughs> section, which is just <laughs> like, there is not a more uh like there's not a worse place on earth. Oh, it's and, I I who I'm really curious of the who the the you is in that situation in the for you tab because none of it's ever for me. I like I can I can tell the moment I read one of the things like who the fuck am I following here? I'm like oh yeah, of course I'm in the for you tab somehow. Got to swipe off of that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you get when I get in there, you realize it's an accident, and you just hope you realize quickly. What's the Rumble for you section like? Yeah, I would like to say I'm actually really not even on Rumble anymore. YouTube and their copyrights have gotten pretty lax, or these like Chinese eight, like these bots have gotten so much better at evading copyrights that um, even when we were in Montreal. I was showing Tim a lot of my favorite YouTube feeds for classic Stern stuff. Yes, you were. Uh, so they've been back in operational. But that's okay. You people want to give me this rumble label. That's that's fine. When's that home run derby? Did that I, happen? I thought you were hosting it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just got this is unbelievable. So uh, BBC News just reported that McDonald's hamburgers linked to E. coli outbreak in the United <laughs> States. <laughs> I'm just seeing this now from the BBC. It says, and it was the quarter pounder sandwiches <laughs> that were making people sick. Oh, my goodness. Now, obviously, these all things happened in the past. Of course, it didn't take long for Kenny Kim to also notice that this is happening. I mean, that's OK. But look, this already happened. So whatever. But that's unbelievable that that, that would happen. It's unbelievable. It's okay, people will blame Trump, not you. Oh, I'm sure that they will. What do you think is better? Do you think it's a smash burger or an E. coli burger? Oh. Well, I guess the, the smash burgers would be so thoroughly cooked through and, and crispy that there'd be no risk of... What uh, if I this changes... Don't know how e. coli works. What if this changes McDonald's practices to cooking their burgers more to smash them up? Because they don't want to have E. coli. <laughs> Tim, pro E. coli is what I've heard. No. That's what this I've is, taken away from is, this entire conversation. This is wild. This is wild. Weird, wild stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, this is my fault. I don't know why I took us down this cul-de-sac. I apologize. Well, uh, according to my show notes here, we've been talking about this for almost 30 minutes. That's that. that I, I take <laughs> some responsibility for that. Some? Yeah, I do take some. You, you, you've I didn't, I taken didn't time. You've Jeff, taken poor time away Jeff from to... Baltimore and Cleveland, which I've tried to move on to four times. Well, look, I this is probably a better Jeff topic. To be and like... then you gave everyone E. coli. No, I didn't. You did. But I didn't Your expect fault. Jeff to, to be the like the, the the champion of Smash Burgers. The I white knight. Delicious. The white knight of Smash Burgers. Yeah, I, Listen, I, didn't, I didn't. I'll be see honest. It there is like a hamburger war that has taken place in toronto over the last few years and i love it like i mean these hamburger shops open these people make great hamburgers and then these another hamburger spots open and like well, that's better than the last one so uh and smash burgers delicious so i'm pro smash burger so 
when your vote comes for the custody award, just remember which candidate is pro Smashburger and which candidate is pro E. coli. And then you make your choice. The moderators are rigged in this this whole race. They're against me. Well, I want you to release the whole tape. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I did break the rule of no fact checking, but uh, I just had to in that situation. Yeah, we promised you would not fact check me. <laughs> For almost about two decades, the irons were really the only good part of my golf game, unless you include 300 yard drives, which meant hitting it about 150 yards straight and 150 yards with slice into the woods to the right. So I finally went and got lessons, straightened out my swing, and all of a sudden I could drive the ball pretty decently, pretty straight. And then my irons just kind of went wayward with the new compression that I was getting onto the ball. So it was time for me to make a change with my irons. So when I heard about the new PXG Black Ops irons and how they can dramatically improve my game, I had to give them a try. Booked a fitting with the PXG location, brought in my current irons, and took the PXG challenge. The staff was amazing. We worked on my ball flight through TrackMan in order to find the perfect irons and the perfect length and the perfect loft for what my game demands these days. And the new Black Ops irons are incredibly easy to hit. They maximize performance and they're fun. Oh, and they're only $149.99 a stick. That is a great price for a great golf iron. So take the PXG Irons Challenge. It's a ton of fun, and if PXG's new Black Ops Irons don't outperform your current irons by delivering either more distance or tighter dispersion, that means better accuracy, during your fitting, you'll get a $250 MasterCards reward card. Hurry, this offer ends October 7th. Book your fitting today at pxg.com. That's pxg.com. Baltimore and Cleveland. Watson's oh, here. Let's, let's, make up, let's make up some time here. Uh, can they cover this with Jameis? It, it's a this feels like a letdown spot for Baltimore, doesn't it? After like everyone is just showering praise on Lamar, he looks great, and then all of a sudden there's like just a letdown game. They win by like six or something. No, I like Baltimore by the number. Tease the Ravens down though, the first part of it, six point tease. Jeff, are we even sure who's playing quarterback for Balt for Cleveland? <sighs> I, I think it's going to be Jameis because DTR is a finger injury. So I will take the Browns. Um, but if they lost by 30, it would, I wouldn't be shocked. I actually believe the Chargers play them next week. Could that, be in Cleveland. That, right? that game will be close. Trust me on that one. All Chargers games feel like they're going to be close. I, I've been close. I agree. That's why I took the Cardinals on Monday night. Felt like it was a field goal game. Give me the points in that spot. And probably with Cleveland as well. Although Cleveland really bad at kicking field goals, Tim. We've noticed that. Oh, awful. Hopkins seems to miss them as often as Zerline does. Maybe you should have a challenge trade. Zerline for Hopkins. Great. Uh, I'll take Baltimore. Perfect. Green Bay and Jacksonville. This might be my super lock. I don't understand how this spread is only four and a half. Can someone educate me on this? No, I mean, I like, I mean, I, I, the book seemed to be with me and thinking that Green Bay is kind of overrated, which, you know, fair enough. I think they are, but this seems like too short of a number, doesn't it? That should be like six. So it's just, I, 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 I will take Green Bay at four and a half. I'm going to take Green Bay at four and a half as well, Jeff. It just seems like anytime Jacksonville does anything positive, like people are all the way back in on Jacksonville. Like they're not good. They beat what's maybe. Close to the worst team in the league. It was a battle of like bottom five teams last week, and Jacksonville beat them. They've been in London for two weeks. They've skipping their bye and coming back and playing the Packers. Like, I, it just seems like a total mismatch to me. Yeah, uh, maybe this is one where like you know Pozzola will say it doesn't work this way. I don't actually think the books are trying to trick you, but feels like it. It's hard not to have the Packers among the very best teams in the league. I'm taking the Packers here. I'm not running to bet it though. Um, it I'm was sure a lot of people. Have. It was five. Now it's four and a half. So the money's coming in on Jacksonville. I guess this makes sense, right? Because you know they're they're losing time coming back from London, and somehow Pizzola is going to tell me that's a huge advantage for them now because they're from the future, and, then, and now they get to play an advantage in the past. for the Patriots there is, fin- for them to finish their game early and us to finish our game late on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. One that. of Jacksonville or the Rams. 
are probably winning this week. Pro- you know what? You're yeah, probably, but you're I feel probably... much different. I feel much differently about like I really like the Rams Thursday. I think it's a good spot. I don't think this is a good spot at all for Jacksonville. I know, but I like both the short, much better record, much better perceived team favorites in those games. So uh, there's no way they're both winning. Uh, Indian Houston. Houston's favored by six. Uh, Anthony Richardson looks bad. That's a thing. Yeah, he should not be in the NFL right now. Ah, uh, that's not fair. Sorry, Gardner. Like, Gardner Minshew. The... Gardner Minshew starts games in the NFL right now. Okay, sorry. Let me rephrase that because that sounded very unfair to your point. Um, he's clearly like got the athletics and the talent. You just watch Anthony Richardson, and obviously, when someone's telling you you're going to be a top five pick, you go. But like football fanboy in me. Like, you just watch him and wish he had, like, 16 more college starts or something. That's sort of the point I'm making. Clearly an NFL arm, an NFL body, uh, but he just can't throw a football, and you wish there was a place where he could develop an ability to throw the football a bit. You got to learn on the job. Clearly, yeah, you do. This game Um, was close in week one, though. Remember that. Yeah, it's too many points. Houston doesn't tend to blow teams out. They blew up the Patriots. Uh, teams s- that they're much better. Even teams that they're much. Yeah, the Patriots are the worst team in the <laughs> NFL, or the, at least the worst team in the AFC. A little different. Um, like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Colts here. I'm gonna be a close game that the uh, that the Texans win very close. I'm with you. I'm here. I'm gonna take Indianapolis as well, plus six. This is a horrible sign. I thought I might even be alone. I'm with Indy. Um, just a weird. Texans off a tough game. They've got Thursday nighter coming up. This will be a close to, close division game. Thursday nighter versus uh, Tim's second favorite team, the Jets, because he's a uh, Chiefs uh, fan Halloween now. Halloween night. Halloween night. Oh yeah, against your your former flame. When are the Chiefs play? That, that's yeah, amazing. Are... That frees you up. You don't have anything to do. You can hand out big candy bars. You're not busy. You can't make an excuse. Let's go to bed. Well, it'll be plenty dark out for you. Not not dark enough. I don't understand how you like the dark so much. You have to use a nightlight. I just find it comforting. Jets in New England. In New England, the Jets are favored by seven points, Jeff. Yeah. Are we just going to run this back like the, the last time when the Jets smoked them? Or do you think Drake May has got a little bit up his sleeve? What a result! A perfect result, I'd say, for the Patriots these last couple of weeks because they lose the games, especially against Jacksonville, a team with a record similar to yours at the moment. And I'm always thinking about the draft. And Drake May, man, guy makes throws. Looks like he's got great awareness, decision making. You see an ability to when he should swallow a play and lift for another down. I mean, to have him play like he's playing, in my opinion, and lose the games is perfect in some ways you'd like to get in some close games and see him get a shot at a two minute drill to win but even losing by 20 and getting to play garbage time chuck i think is great for him and his development all i really want to talk about well we did a lot about the jets bill belichick is amazing he is amazing And he was treading lightly, like early in the season in terms of criticism. But now that we are almost two months into it, he is just, his lips are getting looser. He, these shots at the Patriots, at Mayo, at Kraft. I mean, I, it is one of my favorite non-football football subplots. This thing. Love it. Here's a quote from Devontae Adams, Tim. He told friend of the show, Kay Adams, that Garrett Wilson has picked his brain every day since he joined the Jets. Quote, Garrett's like an open vessel. He's trying to gain knowledge as much as possible at all times. I mean, he makes fun, make he makes it fun to come to work because he challenges me as a leader and a teacher as well. Great. Trade him. Yeah, sure. I'll tra- like I said, I think, I said to one of our friends, Jeff should trade him to Miami so McDaniel cannot target him, too. <laughs> Would you say uh, the uh, Jets might be my super lock, though? I don't trust him against Drake May. I'll take the Jets against the number. I don't trust them. I wouldn't tease them down. I, I don't trust them. 
I'll take the Jets as well. That, that's a sweep for the Jets. Philly and Cincinnati. It's a big game for both these teams to try to figure out who they actually are. I guess the best bet in this game, Jeff, is under first quarter points for the Eagles. Yet to score in ah. the first quarter of the season. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be a real a real thing. Um, the announcers talk about that a lot. No, I it's, have no. It's pretty, it's pretty weird. Yeah, it is weird. Um, the Bengals are favored by two and a half as of right now. Bengals need it, need it. Okay, Tim, we'll go to you. Beating the shit out of the Giants solves anything, but I lean Philly. Philadelphia. I don't trust this Bengals team at all. You trust Philly? I would have said no two weeks ago, but beating a divisional rival like the Giants, who've been playing a little better football recently, as comfortably and as handily as they did, um, yeah, that that turns the ship around a little bit for me, enough to say they should take care of a Bengals team that struggles to score. They don't score many points. They, they Other than the game against Washington, they have really struggled to generate offense. And um, I don't see it coming here either. Didn't they put up like 35 against Baltimore? I don't think so. They lost the game. Pretty sure True. that they did. Didn't they? it was like 38-35? Maybe they did. The last two weeks they haven't been able to score. No, that, this is true. I just worry about Philly's mm. defense, man. Philly's defense has been bad, especially their pasty. And the Bengals do struggle running the ball from time to time. They generally don't have many problems passing, at least since T. Higgins has returned. They've been pretty functional. Feels like you just rewound that Giants game in your mind a whole bunch of times. And this week's, where they were terrible. Eh, did enough. This is a big screen, though, right? Uh, I, Philly's been not fun to watch is the problem. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think about all of the games that are on. I kind of want to see Baltimore-Cleveland for like the, the fun aspect of watching Jameis in there, presumably. New England uh, New England and the Jets is pretty fun for the early slate of games. I don't There's... want that on the main screen. <laughs> I hope. Oh, sorry. Yeah, New England Jets, big screen. <laughs> I want it on a screen where I don't have to look at it. Well, we'll put it on that little mini screen below. No one looks at that screen. No one looks at that screen. We'll put, we'll put the game on that one. Uh, I'll take Cincinnati to win at home. I think these teams are pretty even. Hurts just hasn't looked good. It's been better since A.J. Brown has been back. They just run him down the sidelines once a game and throw a touchdown to him. you think they'd run that play every time since it seems to work every time. But their pass, they, def- their pass defense really worries me, and their complete lack of pressure worries me against Burrow. Like, that's how you get to Burrow. I mean, it's pretty kind of across the board of how you get to any quarterback, I suppose. But him, as he, Goff especially, I find, like, you get some hands in their face, and they're just... That happened with Lamar last night, too. Do you see the play where he... <laughs> When he just chucked, he pulled. He basically pulled a Josh Allen. Like when he was going down, he just threw the ball out of bounds sideways. Like what the hell was he doing? I don't know, but he did throw five touchdown passes. So I'm not going to criticize him. I, I'm not, but it's just, it's just weird to, to see him make decisions like that. Like with a lot of because he doesn't normally have a lot of pressure in his face, and he was very good at eluding it at times in that game because Bulls was bringing the house at him from time to time. But it just seemed like such a weird, off character thing for him to do. I don't know. Do you even know what I'm talking about? Trying to think. No, I mean, I, I watched the game, but I don't guess I don't remember that play. All right. <laughs> Detroit and Tennessee. Tennessee are 11 point dogs at home. Maybe Taja Spears is back for this game. Mason Rudolph probably starting for the Titans. Oh, sorry. It's in Detroit. I got that backwards. Tennessee at Detroit. Uh, and they're favored by 11 at home. Is 11 enough points, Tim? Probably. I mean, you could tell me that it went up to 13 or 14, and I would still probably lean towards the Lions. But I'm going to tease the Lions down. And uh, to five? I don't think they were going to lose. Yeah, I'm going to tease them down to five. Um, just because I was looking for another uh, for a fourth or for a fifth team to add here. Um, I mean, the spread could get all the way to 14 before I think people would seriously want, like in the public, to take the Titans. But. You know, so maybe maybe I have to backtrack and say no, it's not enough points. But there are they aren't valuable points. Like it, like the points that you're not getting are 11, 12, 13, 13 and a half. So yeah, I, I will take the Lions. I expect the Lions to blow them out. I actually think the Lions 
as constituted are the second best team in the NFL. So, oh, you're just like that guy, the Lions fan, uh, who was very well. I think was, they would be was, favored was, against was, anybody, but but I think they would be favored against anybody but Kansas City right now. You really on you, a neutral you, field? You think on a neutral field they'd be favored over Baltimore? I do. I think they would by like a point. Maybe I think they would. I think Baltimore is a better team though. Because I think I just rather. I mean, have, I, I, I'm not going to fight you on it. I, 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 just, I just think I, I think it would just come down to well, the overall construction of the Lions might be better than Baltimore in a one game scenario. I just want Lamar over Goff. No, no, I, 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 I wouldn't fight you on it or get upset about it. I just think at the moment I would have it Chiefs Lions Ravens, but how that's would okay. how would you have it, Jeff? Jeff? I would agree, Sorry. Ravens get ahead of the lions still think, but I, it's like if if kansas city wasn't undefeated i think we'd all think that the ravens are the best team in football i just think i have to hold the loss to the raiders against them when they've only played seven games and one of them was a loss to the, the raiders Bucks. that's know. a much better loss than a loss to the raiders okay i agree i agree can't like, fight it as the year goes on and on that loss matters less and less but still right now that's still enough of a distinct when we're we are splitting hairs i'll be honest like that first game ended i thought derrick henry looked like slow and washed so i'm almost giving them a pass on the first two weeks of the season and uh, you know once we get into it you can almost ignore what that looked like and i don't think there's been a better team the last five weeks i'll take detroit minus 11 i guess how does tennessee score points Oh, you know what's actually a good prop play in this game, Jeff? Chig over whatever his receiving total is if Mason Rudolph starts. He's had like two cool. respectable games this year. They've both been the Mason Rudolph games. I did love that as soon as you, uh, Mason Rudolph was announced a starter, you knew that Cam would be all over it. <laughs> Getting chiggy with it. So there's really nothing nice to say about the Titans. Their defense is okay. We- okay, you're right. So it's, it's, it's okay. Met- it's okay. <laughs> but a lot of the metrics, Pat, like early in the season, especially, you know, I remember hearing from fantasy content or even real content was how great their secondary was playing, how opposing receivers weren't getting much of anything on them. They've got injuries there now. And I can't think of a worse game to have injuries than road in Detroit in your secondary, the way they can do things. There's one case, like if I am picking the Titans, the case has nothing to do with the Titans, and it strictly comes to the fact that this is a sandwich game between a Minnesota and Green Bay game for the Lions. That's the only case I can make for how this game might be close. Is Detroit in a sandwich spot, just sleeps walk through, sleeps, sleepwalks through it at home? I don't like picking that way, so... I think the Lions win by two touchdowns. Yeah, I just, I don't see where the point, if you think that Detroit can get to 25 points in this game, it's very difficult for me to see the Titans scoring more than 14. Maybe I'm dead wrong and Pollard goes off, but it's, it's tough to envision that scenario. And even Detroit only scoring 25, right? Yeah, it only happened once this year. They were held to fewer points than that. Jamison Williams may be suspended for this game. I don't know when that suspension kicks in. So he met, how many games did he miss to start his career? Eight with the knee injury? Yeah, he didn't do anything last week either. But yeah, I think eight. Eight, and then he was suspended for gambling on games. Not NFL games, mm-hmm. but he got, he got suspended six games for that. Now he has a PED suspension. What is next for Jamison Williams? What can he do? You don't want I don't, that even, I don't even wish to, I don't even wish to venture a guess. Yeah, because I could answer it. And the first thing that came to mind, I don't know. Was it Ray Carruth or Kareem Hunt or Ray Rice? Like maybe um between a hunt and rice. My brain didn't go to Carruth, man. <laughs> well, I don't know. You were, <laughs> we're thinking about different place. levels here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know. Somewhere between like a Ray. I'm just saying, like, the next level up is a Ray Rice, Deshaun Watson. Some sort of domestic shit. That's so I'm sure that's on a if you have a Jamison Williams bingo card incident, those would be on it. 
I'm not hoping for it. Now, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on Jamison Williams that way because I think the two things that he have done are completely victimless crimes in terms of gambling on a sport that is not oh, yours. It's your and to, fault. And, and, you asked. You made my brain go to a dark place. I was never sorry, going Jeff. there. Sorry, Jeff. And you know, taking PEDs. You know, I'm pro PEDs in football. I think everyone should take steroids in football. Anything to help you out. It's a violent sport. You need you need good Anything recovery time. to help these. Anything to help these guys get back on the field feeling as good as possible the next week. Yeah, just just legalize it for the NFL only, and then we're good to go. Well, that brings us to the midway point of the show, which means it's time for a mini version of Cust Corner. Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. Cust Corner, it's Cust Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's... Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner, Cuss Corner. <laughs> well, you had asked me last week to come up with the five scariest movies for me. Oh, that's right. And so I did put together a list of the five movies I find scariest, uh, or that you know I would ask people to watch in terms of like great scary movies. Maybe that's the better way to put it. So you're you're coming um, in real Roper like here, and you got your five top Halloween movies. For Tim Andercast. They're not they're not necessarily Halloween movies. They're scary movies. Uh like for example, number five I have on the list is Misery. That's a scary movie. That is not a Halloween movie. Now, but it you, is a terrifying movie. Do you think it's scary because you might get caught having Kathy Bates beats while you're watching it and you're just That's terrified a, someone might walk in? Look, it's a terrifying movie. Annie Bates's character is absolutely frightening. And like the hobbling scene is terribly like graphic and like the whole tension is, I mean, there's also like goofy, like over the top violence. Like when Buster, the sheriff gets that like big hole blown through him when he shows up at the house or the tele, the, 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 the typewriter smashed into her head, but so, spoiler alert here for a 30 year old movie. But like just 30. the tension of the whole movie is scary and terrifying. So uh, that's on my list as number three. And I'm, I have another Stephen King movie at four, which is The Shining, uh, which is also just a terrifying, scary film. Not a Halloween movie, but one that just like when you watch it, in fact, the more you watch it, the more sort of scary and weird it becomes. Did you ever watch the five separate theory documentary about The Shining? I have not. Room, is it excellent? What's I bet it is. 237? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. 237. Let's see. Yeah, it is what it's called. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, but it's fun. Like how I the, can see that. The, the entire movie is just Stanley Kubrick actually telling us that he was the one who faked the moon landing. <laughs> well, you know, there's no wind on the moon. How does the flag stay up? <laughs> Bitches be legal on the moon, though. I heard that once. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, the one old classic I have is The Birds. That's number okay. three. Have you seen a scary movie within the last 30 years? Yes, I have. Because Misery is 30. I just looked it up. Misery is 34 years old. Okay. When's so, the last no. time you've seen The Burbs? The Birds. Is that the Tom Hanks and the Scary Neighbors? No, he's thinking about the one with no, the actual this is birds. An Al- in this it. is an yeah, this is an oh. Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh. Sorry, that's terrifying. Number two is Us. Really? Yes, that's a very scary movie, and an excellent movie. I really liked that movie. Can I guess number one? Go ahead. Zootopia. No, it's Ernest Scared Stupid. Oh. Those, tro- those trolls movie. were terrifying as like a six terrifying movie. terrifying the scariest <laughs> movie you can ever watch still scares me today the very thought of those trolls scares me still so you asked i delivered those i think are the five scariest movies they're not the most like i didn't pick eli roth's hostel for example like that's a scary movie in its own way but i didn't pick that that's not really a scary movie though it's a, it's a gory movie. It's like that, that, it's gory. The, gory does not equal scary. There's a lot of gory movies. That is, can, I really, I, I oftentimes really they go th- together. I they, really they thought can. Showgirls would end up on that list for Tim. You know what else is a scary movie? Jurassic Park. What? When I was ten years old, I it would scare it, that's, me. But that's I loved what it. I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. So, are you only judging this through the lens of you being ten years old? 
<laughs> I'm, well, th- this is my list of the movies I find scary. So you basically, have your own list. You, you saw Misery at ten years old, and you're like, I'm never watching a scary movie again. No, I, I just I th- you don't agree that that's not a scary movie. No, it's not. The terrifying. It's, it's, it's like saying Silence of the Lambs is a scary movie. It's not. It has its moments where it's terrifying. It, there's jumps in it, but I wouldn't say it's a scary movie. Uh, I don't know. You dis- I disagree. I mean, if, if we're here with Tim's delicate constitution, maybe everything is terrifying. But, you know, like seven isn't a scary movie. I would know seven not- is not a scary movie. It's a th- it's a thriller, but it's not. I, I would scary. say I would say seven is probably scarier than Silence of the Lambs or Misery. Well, I didn't have Silence of the Lambs on my list. But no, I wouldn't say it's scary than misery. No, no. It most definitely is. When was the last time you no, thought it... about some guy attaching a knife to someone's dick? Oi. Ugh. It's a Orson... terrible scene. Fuck is that guy's last name? It's Orson something. Oh, now I have to type in knife dick guy seven in my... I'll go into incognito mode. You could have just typed... You could just type in, <laughs> you could just type in lust. No, seven. no, no. Knife dick guy seven is most definitely going to get me what I want here. Um, Frank Ocean. That's not that guy's name. Who's is Frank Ocean dead? The musician, I believe. Oh my God. Incognito mode doesn't have my, like my dark mode on. What is going on here? Well, incognito mode tells me it's Richard kind. So maybe I did put in the wrong thing. It's most definitely not Richard kind. No, it's not the, f- no, it's not Richard kind. I don't think. No, it's, it's, it's most definitely not Richard Kahn. So what are some other... You know what other movie, you know what other movie is scary? Leland, Leland Orser is the guy's name. That's what it is. Is Signs. Signs? That movie scared me. Like with the, the crop signs and stuff? You know, with Mel Gibson as the priest who's trapped by the car, dies. At the is end. that M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah. yeah, it is. Swing Away, Joaquin, or whatever the fuck he, he probably doesn't use his own name in the movie. That's a scary, that is a scary movie. As is Drag Me to Hell. Drag Me to Hell is not really scary. It's more fun than anything. Drag Me to well, Hell rules. It's I love fun, Drag Me to it's Hell. Fu- it's fun when it's not being scary. But, yeah, but there are it, scenes where it's just straight up horror. It's it's horror, it's jump scares, but it's, it's like saying like Evil Dead, like they're all Sam Raimi movies. Like Sam Raimi horror slash comedy slash jump scare is all the same type of movie to me, in my mind. And they're, like they're not terrifying movies. Well, they're not terrifying, but they're scary. Like they put you at, they make you uncomfortable. You're at unease. You can't like settle into the sofa when you watch it. You're like, you're anxious. You're scared. Eh. They're movies. Well, yeah, they're movies, but the whole purpose is to elicit a reaction from you. Yeah, I say the the reaction from Drag Me to Hell is fun. You're rooting for her. You get dragged to it's hell. It's fun when it's it's you know, it's fun when at some times, and it's terrifying at other times. And the best part of the movie, again, spoiler alert, is that in the end she gets dragged to hell. Now you're ruining Drag Me to Hell for everyone. I just said spoiler alert. So well, you didn't give people a chance to jump fifteen. You just immediately went into it. You're supposed to pause after you say spoiler alert. What are, what are people supposed to do? Stop in the microsecond that you took in between? Yes. Oh, okay then. See, that's scary that you would think that way. Close Encounters of the Third Kind also almost made my list. Jeff, do you have any that's good ones? That's a very scary movie. No, because I don't really watch scary movies but um, or horror, but <laughs> as a kid, like, Aliens scared the shit out of me. Alien or Aliens? Because I Alien is good. Aliens is not good. That is I not. No that is absolutely not true, by the way. Yeah, well, see, that's because you don't like Ridley Scott. I like. I, hold, hold on, I I didn't mention anything about Ridley Scott. You just said that Aliens is a bad movie. It is a bad movie. It's not a bad movie at all. It's an awesome movie. No, the first one is much better. Yeah, I'd say they're about on par with each other. I don't agree. And when am I anti Ridley Scott? We, we every time I bring up a Ridley Scott movie, other than like Gladiator, you find reason to mock it or make fun of it or whatever. Do I? Like I, I spent like how many weeks telling you that I thought that Napoleon movie was going to be really yeah, good. Yeah, and I told and you that it I looked. And I, to- and it I was... told you that it looked terrible, and you were like, "Yeah, it wasn't as, very good." And as soon as I saw it, you couldn't have been happier for me to tell you uh, that I didn't you, think it was any good. You can see that it wasn't going to be any good. Yeah, well, I actually thought it. it had every potential to be really good. And was it? No. So I wasn't. was right. 
You were right. And the joy you took about being right because you don't like Ridley Scott movies. I do like like Ridley Scott movies. Do you? I do. Like, we've gone through this before, and I've mentioned movies of his to you, and you're like, ah, that's not that good. Oh, that's not that good. It, well, I mean, he has, a, when you make, like, two movies a year for 50 years, you're going to have a lot of stinkers. It's just, you seem job. to think that, like, every one of his movies is amazing. He is a, I'm a fan. He is one of the better working directors, but it's like saying, like, Woody Allen doesn't have any stinkers, which most of his movies are he stinkers. He does. But he just makes a movie every fucking year. Well, I'll so go you, to the theaters for so, about so, a year or two. Oh, I'll go some most definitely going. Is it an IMAX or not? I want, what? Get, like, I want to get like the full Gladiator 2 experience. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to go see that movie. Yeah. Uh, I, and I don't expect it's good. I'm going to have, usually I get way too high of expectations for sequels. Like I had to be at the theater's opening night to see Bad Santa 2, for example. Oh my I God. thought it was going to be awesome. It was what so the hell? Bad. I thought it was going to be so good. Well, it had Kathy Bates in it. I thought it was going to be really good. (laughs) And cut. You forget, Jeff, that Cuss was the star of the first movie as Thurman Merman. No, I I do not look like him. I am not like him. All you do is whittle pickles and you look exactly like him. (laughs) Do not do that. Yeah, dude just directs way too many movies. I mean, he's like 90 years old. Good on him, but. Like, you don't like Black Hawk Down? I think Black Hawk Down is great. Black Hawk Down's okay. I mean, Blade Runner's his best movie. That's not even close. I think Gladiator is his best movie. Gladiator's probably his, like, biggest movie. I like Gladiator, but I would say that Gladiator is more of, like, I, know, I always put that on Russell Crowe of why that movie's so great. I think The Martian is fantastic. I think you even have a poster for The Martian behind you. I do. I like The Martian. But you know what I didn't like? House of Gucci. Whatever. Like I'm just saying, there's a lot of bad movies that come along with the good ones. Like his hit rate is the only one that I really, the only one that I think was trash. I think we've said this word. I thought Prometheus was just terrible. You only like the first Alien movie, then, is what we're getting at. No, I actually liked Alien Covenant. Okay, I actually thought that was all right. That was the one with Michael Fassbender in it. That was all right. But Prometheus was just awful. Again, I got excited for it. And then I got to see it, and it was a disappointment. He has five movies in production where he's a director right now. That's because he's a marvelous director. I think he just doesn't want to die. People, everyone want, I think people would, like want to do his projects because they think it's Ridley Scott. And he's, you know, he's a name. He is a name, but I'm telling you, man, he's directed a fair share of really bad movies. You know what I talk about a movie that I got really hyped for that didn't live up to it, Jeff, that is a Ridley Scott movie was American Gangster. Thought that I don't movie mind was that one. It's fine. Like it's a fine movie, but I thought it was gonna be awesome. It anyway. had so many good actors in it, is the yeah. thing. It should have been amazing. And it wasn't. Who was the like third it was Idris Elba Denzel I- Idris and Elba Crow and Idris Elba was like random other gangsters. Cuba movie. Gooding? Oh yeah. I forgot about Cuba and Josh Brolin's in that movie too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's the FBI agent, isn't he? Yeah. The D or the... That, 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 that was a good movie. It's all right. Like, you, your standard for everything is... G- bad. You think bad is good and good is great is the problem on your scale. It's like when you rank food and you never rank anything no, below a 7 just, out of 10. I just described to you a mo- movies that I didn't like. You described, like, two movies you didn't like. Okay. There's, there's, well, and, there's and, other and, movies I haven't and, liked. And you liked Napoleon enough... You didn't think it was bad. Oh, like, you just didn't think it was it amazing. Wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't a walkout. Well, have you ever walked out of a movie? No, I haven't. I've thought about it. Okay, I've I, never done it. What was the last movie you thought about walking out of? Mother. Oh, my my wife wanted to walk out of Mother. I loved Mother so much. It it's was such a amazing. bad movie. Oh, it's, it's horrible. Such a bad it's movie. So bad. Such a bad movie. It is like to watch it. Jeff, if you've ever it was want- not what I was promised. No, not at all. If you've ever wanted to see in a movie that was clearly written over a 36 hour Coke binge, it's that movie. Someone's like, hey, Dar- hey, hey, Darren, we got five million bucks for you. If you can come up with a script by Monday, he's like, I will stay up all weekend and write you this movie. And it's fucking batshit insane. Yeah, and the yep. thing is, I-, I like his movies. I like the wrestler. I liked the the one with Russell the- Crowe where he's Noah. I like those his movies. Is that that movie-, movie was so bad. Yeah, it's it's and heavier Bardem's in it. It's just awful. Yeah, it's really bad. It's it a, is- it's quite the exciting watch though. 
<laughs> I was watching it one time. Yes, I agree with you. I'd never see it again. But just sit there and be like, <laughs> man, everyone hates this movie. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> it has like big The Room vibes to it, but in a slightly different way. With none of the charming qualities that The Room has. No, no, exactly. Uh, okay, so I had two quick topics for you. One, I was at the barber today. Shout out to the woman who cut my hair. She did a very thorough job, which I'm not used to at that place when I go to it, because I just get two on the side, four on the top, and I, and I get the hell out of there. But the music that plays at these places, Jeff, now be it a clothing store, a grocery store, a barber shop, it's been the same music for 40 years. It's the same station for 40 years. They have not advanced past, like, hollow notes. I feel like I, he I hear a lot of Taylor Swift. Maybe. But I just find that anywhere that, especially like department stores, barbers, and grocery stores in general, the gym is different because the gym doesn't necessarily play new music, plays a bit more upbeat music. But it's like I'm cl classic rock became a thing, and then just these places never got away from it. Well, because it's I'm like surprised the, the barber shop. I'm surprised the barber shop is the same as like the department store. It's like the one the one classic rock channel that they got. They're rolling with it for life. Maybe that's an out here safe. type of thing. Because it's safe, right? You, you're you not going to upset anybody by having that on. Has anyone ever going to say, upset? turn that off? Has anyone ever said that anywhere? Can you imagine being, you'd be like that woman who was pressing the button on the sign where there was no I button. Felt so I felt so terrible. I felt so terrible. You felt terrible for that woman because that would be you. No, it wouldn't be me. But I was like, instead of helping <laughs> this poor woman, they're just humiliating her by videotaping her. Uh, we just saw a video, Jeff, of this, like, this. she wasn't even that old, was the one thing. Like, she really should have known better. She parked in a space that was for, like, curbside pickup, but she thought it was to order food. She just walked up to the sign with no buttons and just started pressing it. <laughs> Couldn't you see Best. Tim doing that? I could see him being confused, wandering around. I don't think he'd tap a parking sign looking for a button. No. Eh, you sure? Is it because he wouldn't yes. be the one driving, so he wouldn't feel responsibility to press a non-existent button? I'm not sure. Uh, finally, Jeff, you might know this. Tim most definitely does not. I'm looking to get a, a villa in Putacana. Do you, do you know any hookups there? Or if anyone watching knows, you, know, you can DM me on Instagram and give me the hookup on that. I feel like you would know. No. I don't. I I don't have any villa timeshare hookups. In it, it's not. It, it, listen, it could just be a rental. It could be a pro. Like I'm. Tr I'm trying to get like. A, if anyone has stayed at Corrales, I'm trying to stay at Corrales. So I want to play. That's it. where they golf. Yeah, that's that's why I want to go. It's there. lovely there. Um, this is fascinating listening for the for the listeners. Hey, it's look, gotta be. Look, you, hey, folks, let's oh, take time I, I, to talk about. I, I'm sorry. Was I the one who derailed the show for 30 minutes? And I'm trying to get a fucking deal on a trip. You were going to talk about this irrespective of that. I agree, but am I? So I'm not even derailing the show. I'm following the show notes. I'm not saying you're derailing it. I just you say, just said, you just said I was derailing the show. I'm like, well, no, I said, how interesting can this be for the listeners to listen to listen, you just, you don't, you don't think that people, you don't, you you don't think now, now you're, Indiana? now you're derailing the show. I'm asking the listeners to help me out here. The listeners like helping Tim. You won't even name names on the Smashburger place to advise no, people won't. not to go there, which is no, so I won't. It, it, it's I, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't advise people to go there. It's not like it, it was good. It just isn't like what I would want. For what it is, it's quite good. But like, you, is not, that because you don't want to give up like a semblance of a location near where you live, or you don't want to promote an establishment? Like what I'm is not. That? I'm not going to answer that question. Why not? Why? It's really weird. Why? What is so weird about that? Question? I'm just not going to. I'm not going to answer that question. I don't know what I've asked you. So many more either offensive, abrasive, personal questions. I feel nope. I choose no comment. <laughs> Jared has been going back through the shows in order to come up with the best of for the year. And he mentioned a comment to me a little bit earlier. Do you remember what that comment was, Jared? If you can figure out. No, no, no. You see, you think you can, but you can't. Uh, the comment was that Tim, 
in the AFC preview show, I think, said that if we could keep these to a tight two hours, that'd be phenomenal. We have not had one show less than two and a half hours the entire the entirety of the football I felt, season. I feel like there was one episode, isn't there, that we got to two hours? There, there may be yeah, one. Yeah, there was, get there, out of here. yeah, there was one you had to leave out. early. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. So we got out. Th- this isn't that show. Oh look, I take full I take as much responsibility as anybody for these shows going on unnecessarily long. People love the long shows. The highest downloaded show by far was last week's show. Not even close. You, it it you, set, you, it's, you it's, it's, it's set the download record for the year of football so far within less than 24 hours of the show being out. I think that had no effect. I don't think the length though had any effect to that. It I think it was the first the that- it was the first one that was 3 hours. Yeah, I know, but I think that's incidental. I think that's correlation. I don't think that's causation. Now, what would you say? You know, I, what would you say you know about podcast metrics, Tim? I mean, I think nothing that I that people are gonna people were interested in the Jets flaming out on a Monday night, and were very excited to see what type of reaction that was going to come from me. But you said you weren't going to watch the game. Why would they tune in? Because of that? Well, I hadn't, I, no, I hadn't. I hadn't said that. You said you weren't watching. I you said, said on the Sunday night show that you were not watching them on Monday night. No, I said during the Monday night game, I turned it off before the Hail Mary. Oh, that's and right. That's when I forced wore them off. That's right. Jeff, you were going to say? Yeah. Um, and hopefully you could just do this quick and I won't interject, but I'm just fascinated in both of your opinions. Nothing to do with the actual like campaigns or the people themselves. But seeing how, like, the election cycle, like, how the Blue Blood media, how, like, the New York Times, if they want information on a candidate, they have to listen to, like, bro podcasts or call her daddy. Is like, that is the information outlet now. They are dodging, essentially, mainstream media and both campaigns effectively, clearly, like, it's just about the podcasts. And it's, Tim, I'm more curious about him because he's in old school and old soul media heart. He's not like going to these podcasts. Well, it's easier. No, but, it, but it's the easy. media clips it. Yeah, the media can clip it out of that and take it. So the people who still pay attention to the crooked New York or the failing New York Times and these other outlets can still get their like Frankenstein clips that way where it's completely taken out of context anyway. But if you want to hit a special demographic of voters that you need to reach, Jeff, wouldn't the micro industry of podcasting actually be that way? So you take the largest subsect of these podcasts or outlets for this micro niche of people that are all, listen, I, I, I know a little something about podcast metrics. Do you know that most people who watch this show have a very similar background, Tim? Would that surprise you to know? It would not surprise me. No, but it's a great for for advertisers. It is fantastic. Uh, the background, you you great people out there, you keep doing what you're doing, working your great jobs, and tuning in for a really long time and killing time at work and buying PXG clubs. That is what we need to see from the Pat Mayo Experience viewership. But if you if listen, there's a reason that someone like PXG would come to me, knowing what the viewership and metrics of this show are. So why wouldn't you do that if you wanted to get out in in front of? If you have identified, I don't know, I don't know what the metrics would be of, like, call me daddy. Like, what would what would that, like, main audience be, do you think? Young girl? Young ladies? Is, is young it? I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, is that, is that I would that, presume, like, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's, demo, like, yeah. college girls and girl, women in their 20s and early 30s, I would think. Yeah. So that seems like a perfect way to micro-target that subsect of people mm-hmm. by going on that. And like you said, the, the legacy media places get on and to it anyway. And I think from a campaign perspective, you probably not always get like, I wouldn't say non hardball questions because the, you know, the crooked real media doesn't really ask very many difficult questions at this point in time, but you might get some softball answers, but it also comes off as like, it feels more real. Like it makes the candidates more personable at the same time than sitting down with like 60 minutes. The answer that Trump or the exchange of Trump and Theo Vaughn around cocaine and what it feels like might have been the most authentic, like personable, interested in what someone else was saying Trump ever, ever we've seen. And that kind of makes sense of like that would stick out to people in like the 20 to 40 dude demographic because we'd be the ones watching Theo Vaughn, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I watched more of like that got clipped and and saw, it, and obviously, I'm fascinated with with some of those. But um, yeah, clearly, it allows them yeah, micro niche. There it is. In the same way, it's like you do a golf betting podcast for micro niche. Yeah, you do a golf betting podcast yeah. for generally white guys between 25 and 50 who have like six figure incomes. That's who likes golf. That's not shouldn't be a shocker to anyone. And the people dem- with expensive hobbies. Yeah, and the demographics for the NFL show on this network are actually a lot different than the demographics for the golf show on this network. And me and you do the same show, Jeff. I think it skews younger. It, it, the NFL most definitely skews younger. Golf skews. Yeah. It's not significantly older, but it's instead of being like the ad- less affluent. Not necessarily. Or actually. football. It, okay. it is it is less by like, but it's not like where you think like when I first started doing the show at Fantasy, there was a huge gap between the football audience and the golf audience in terms of what I guess is relatively judged as average income per viewer. But it's really normalized over the years. Uh, it's not quite the disparity isn't quite as big anymore. But I guess that's because we mainly talk about gambling and generally people who gamble at least theoretically have money to gamble. So what's the biggest difference? Just it skews younger. Yeah, it skews a little bit younger. So I would say the golf, like the like when you see like the the median for, uh, or at least the the largest subsect of like when you break down the demographics and age, thirty six to forty five is the highest for golf, where twenty five to thirty five is for NFL. But those are still like the two big ones for each. So anyway, that's, there's a little insight to uh, podcast metrics of the Pat Mayo experience. Um, oh yeah. Subscribe, rate and review the Pat Mayo experience on Apple and Spotify. If you want to get a draw for 500 bucks, listen, I'm trying to buy voters over here and buy, buy podcast reviews. I've heard that's a legal thing to do now. You're not just giving a million dollar a day raffle out. <laughs> listen, if, 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 listen, if my viewership wants to increase their average income by tenfold and buy more products you hear on the mid rolls, I'll do a million dollar giveaway a day, baby. We'll do it. So you guys need to work harder is what I'm saying. I am working as hard as I can. I don't think that you are. Do you think you are? Okay. I think so. You're working as hard as you're, you're running at, a hundred percent at all times. I think if I tried too hard, it wouldn't work. Says the guy who needs breaks after like eight minutes of shoveling. Look, that is very dangerous for your heart. You need to take breaks. What do you think is more dangerous for your heart? Shoveling or McDonald's? Uh, I mean, they're both it's a dangerous bad parlay, and, di- and I got to. They're do a both bit dangerous, and di- yeah. they're both dangerous in different ways. Yeah, it is a pretty bad parlay. It's a part one is a, sl- I one is a slow burn. One is a slow burn, whereas one is like more immediately dangerous. And Tim isn't wrong. Like, live it. You guys see it too. I mean, anyone who lives where it snows a lot, like you see on the news semi regularly in the winter, like, dude, drop dead fucking shoveling. Yeah. Be very careful when that- you snow, small shovel amounts, and take <laughs> lots of breaks. I think that depends on who you're talking to, though. Do you think that the increase, because I could see, I mean, Tim, I don't want to say this is going to happen to you, but. I'd be worried about it with you is because you think that you can do things despite being in terrible shape. And then you go from doing nothing to do something very, you know, labor laborious and heart raising like shoveling snow. And I think that happens to a lot of people. People don't realize how out of shape they are, how old they are at certain points. And they think they can still do what they used to do. And that's where the real problem comes in. Like you don't see a lot of like in shape, 30 year old dudes keeling over shoveling snow. Okay. To your point, you like literally, this isn't even a joke. The amount of pickleball injuries. Yes. Um, yes. Like knee injuries. It's the exact same thing. You're not in shape. You don't do a lot of shape. You're out there having fun. And then at one moment, your brain's like, I'm going to get that point. And you give an overexert. Boom goes, you know, boom, boom goes the Achilles. Yeah, something. So uh, it's been keeping like the. Uh, it's been booming for the doctors. I tell you that much. Late set of games. We got the Bills and Seahawks. Seahawks are three point dogs at home. Ooh. I still don't know what to make of the Seahawks at all. Uh, they look really good indoors offensively. Their defense is putrid. And then the Bills are a team of two and a half great quarters per week. And then you don't know what they're going to do for the other quarter and a half. I'm going to take the Bills minus three on the road. I just think they're the better team. Oh yeah, I'm taking Buffalo too. I don't really, I still don't trust Seattle. I still don't trust Geno. 
Uh, they played well last week. They played badly two weeks ago. I don't know. They're, they're a tough team to figure out, but I like Buffalo here. Jeffrey? Don't really have a ton to add to that other than I like the Bills, and then seeing this game reminds me of that great impression you had Cam do of Gabe <laughs> this week. And Gabe is at because he lives in Vancouver now. He's going to this game in Seattle. But before he goes to the game in Seattle, friends, he's going to L.A. for Friday night for game one of the World Series. So um, he's a real one, that Morency. But I'm back in the Bills. Three points, Josh Allen. You know, nice win for Seattle, for Seattle going cross country with the long week. But I'm laying through all the way three with with that one here. Tim didn't think that Amare Cooper would be any sort of game changer for the Bills, but I disagree, Jeff. I think he's exactly what they needed. I totally agree. When you have a quarterback of that skill set, like you only need an Amare Cooper level player. Like, do you know what Amare Cooper that level would do for another great quarterback like Justin Herbert? He'd be a huge help. He'd be a huge help. So when you have a quarterback that can extend plays, make things happen, who's even way better than Justin Herbert, he's going to utilize Amari Cooper and bring the best out of him. Not shocked one bit. New Orleans at your Los Angeles Chargers, Jeff. Seven and a half well, let, is the total. I'll let Tim start because he seemed to like, um, he wants to yell at my coach. I'm disappointed that he sort of seemed to lose his cool in an important spot and the team didn't respond very well. I didn't think. And the, 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 the defensive stand at the end, when you knew what Arizona was going to run and just couldn't stop it was a little discouraging. I have to say that that was that, that could not have been a good moment for a Chargers fan to see that happen. Um, too many points. I like new Orleans here uh, coming off extra rest indoors against a team coming off the sh- a very short rest. Um, yeah, I, I like the Saints here. It's too many points. I don't see the Chargers winning this game by 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 eight points plus. I think it's like a seventeen to ten game. So I think I get the cover, and I like the the Saints. I actually, so I'll be quick. I, I like the Chargers here, Jeff. But you yeah. can go ahead. I think this game might look closer to like the Chargers Carolina game. The Chargers is going to beat on a bad team that I don't. I like to think they'll just take control of at the point of attack in the same way Denver did. To Tim's point about the coach, uh, he was quite animated after a third down call didn't go their way. If they get that third down, they can almost ice the game. So that was a huge moment and a huge call, and a flag was thrown, and they picked it up. Did it deserve to be picked up? Yeah, probably, but the Chargers didn't get a lot of love for the refs. I think the numbers bear that out. I'm not blaming the refs. The Chargers lost that game for themselves, and they didn't put in the refs in a position to help them, so that exasperated Harbaugh. You saying, like, they... The next play was a field goal, which they made. Uh, And then they made two great plays on defense. And then there was a 15-yard penalty called. Would have been third and 10 on Kyler. Instead, they had the ball at midfield, only needing a field goal when kickers are hitting them 70. Uh, But Tim's not wrong that the Chargers got graded on the ground yesterday. I watched the game. I have my eyeballs. Um, the same eyeballs that showed me Justin Herbert's pretty freaking good. And when we build out that offense, we're going to be pretty good. How's the, how are the injuries for the chargers right now? Are any of these guys expected back next week? Well, Tim doesn't have to say anything, but I, how about about (laughs) offense? How about offensive line wise? How's the offensive line looking? The offensive line is healthy. I would actually say last night I was quite disappointed. I think it was their worst game of the season. Um, And they couldn't run the ball. They did not run the ball as well as they've been able to run the ball this year. So against the Saints, that's a two-pronged thing. It's like before yesterday's game, I'm like, holy shit. In a look-ahead thought in my mind, I'm like, we will mangle the Saints because of how Jim Harbaugh just wants to play football, how they got dominated at the line of scrimmage versus Denver. We should dominate the Saints. Watching how badly it seemed like the Chargers inefficiently were able to run the ball yesterday, credit to Jonathan Gannon, but I didn't know that Arizona's front line are gang are gangbusters. I don't believe they are, so I take responsibility for not being able to run the ball. I'm watching that and being like, well, now I'm less confident against the Saints. Because I thought we could just grade these Arizonas and we can't, but I think Harbaugh is going to get back to basics and we're going to rail. We're going to, we're going to grade, um, you know, just, we're going to maul. 
Uh, of but, note, we, of note, the Cardinals tenth against the run per DVOA. The Saints thirty first against the run. Yeah. Okay. So clearly, I didn't. I Cardinals they played to that, and they might have even played a little better than that. And the Saints will not be able to. And that's why I think the Chargers can just control this game. Um, I think it looks a lot like this. I think it looks a lot like we saw it. Like when we broke down the Denver and Chargers game two weeks ago, we're like, these teams are like kind of similar, except one has Bo Nix and one has Justin Herbert with the way that they're set up. And I still think that. And I just watched Denver blow out New Orleans. I don't see why the Chargers wouldn't do the same thing, but this time at home. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And the Saints got more injuries in that game on defense. So that did not um that did not go well for them. I'm still a little annoyed about last night's game because I feel like they should have won it and they blew it. Uh yeah, they'll win this game. They'll cover that number. But a lot of the the like model bros, you know, like the sharps, the dudes that model everything out. They're having a tough time. Let me ask you guys, like, what do you make of the Chargers defense? Because you can look at all the quarterbacks they've played all year and be like, I still don't know if they're as good as these metrics. They're probably not. But their next two games are against Rattler and Jameis Winston. And we're going to be in like week 10. And even like the even the the, the smart guys and be like i still don't know what to make like i don't know how real or not real this chargers defense is because they haven't played a quarterback i mean these are the same people that brought you carolina is going to be good this year so does it even really matter what they think no but i'm like where do you actually think the chargers defense is slightly above average yeah but i'm like dvoa and points allowed per game have them like top three uh, DVOA has them at eighth right now. I'd say, you know, they're probably somewhere between 10 and 15. Yeah, but that's good enough, especially coming from the era I'm familiar. I'm familiar with, but fuck man, tart, Puna Ford or tart. I always mix them up, but very great low end signings. Dude is whole makes that interception on the first drive and he's holding it like a bread basket. Like he's a somebody. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Jalen Rager also holding the ball like a loaf of bread, like he's a somebody. Unfortunately, I was that, that's to me the play that lost the game. But there are other places to win the game. There are other places to have taken that play back and done something else, but they didn't. And credit to Arizona, I guess. Whatever, annoying. The team only kicks five field goals. You probably should lose. So you're right. That's that's a fair that's a fair point. I'm not going to argue that. Carol- lost. Carolina is at Denver. Denver is a nine-point favorite at home. I mean, Denver's defense is actually good. The Panthers' defense is brutal, and their offense is now brutal. It just, it, it's just—it's to the point where if it's not two touchdowns with the Panthers, Tim, I just can't take them. I'm taking Denver. Yeah, I'll take the Panthers. Hesitatingly. But like, I just feel like nine points is too much to is... lay with Bo Nix in a Super Bowl rematch <laughs> of a game I I, I really enjoyed a, a Denver Super Bowl win. Uh, yeah, I just I just out of principle will take Carolina. I think it's too many points for Denver. I wouldn't bet it. I wouldn't tease it. I wouldn't do anything with it. But I will take Carolina here with zero confidence. Hey, when was the last mm-hmm. time that they kept a game within nine points? Zero times this season. I mean, they're going to go on the well, road. they won a game. They won. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 sorry. They, they beat the Raiders. That was the one time, and they, and they won that game by 14. They've lost by 37, 23, 10, 26, 18, and 33. So they're due. I don't know that they'll be favored. They'll be an underdog by less than a touchdown on the road again this year. Probably not, although if they had to go to New Orleans right now, Oh, they play. They, 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 they play New Orleans at home next week. But yeah, De- but, like, Derek, but Derek Carr and and Olave might be back for that game. Yeah, well, that would, would that that would change things. Yeah, 
I'm taking Denver. There's not a number you could give me right now. I think Pat said it. That's shorter than two touchdowns. Uh, I'm not betting it, though, but Denver. I, I mean, this is on a short list of super lock for me. Denver just to crush Carolina. Just anyone to crush. I've been doing good with crushing Carolina. Is my Betting on Washington as small to semi-large favorites and picking against Carolina has been just the recipe this year for super locks. But hey, there's this mm-hmm. team, Chicago at Washington. Washington is now a two and a half point dog at home to the Bears coming off by week. We spoke a little bit earlier. I mean, I guess it was like three hours ago now about Tua and the line in that game that heavily indicates that Tua is playing. I mean, this line is telling us that Jalen Daniels isn't playing. Yeah, this is definitely a Mariota line. And if that's the case, I got to take the Bears. It's just a for- It's just fortunate for Chicago that this game should fall in their lap the way it did. Because without Daniels, I don't think that they're going to be able to move the ball against the Bears' defense the way that he was able to move the ball last week. Um, it's a good spot for Chicago. I I, 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 I like I probably liked them even with Daniels, but that would have been dependent on where the the spread uh, shook out. I definitely like them only laying two and a half points at FedEx for a, a team that for a fan base which is yeah sure fired up, but a lot less fired up if they're going not to watch Daniels. I think. Uh, be an interesting game to see uh, how how Kingsbury uh, comes up with a different game plan, sort of from the from scratch. Now, if he has to uh, play without Daniels, uh, I, I'm I'm very fascinated to see this game. Uh, even without uh, Daniels, it's still a fascinating game. But I I like the Bears here. I'm torn on this because I do think that Mariota can run sort of the the C version of the Daniels offense. It's it's one of the things that I really like about having him as the backup, Jeff. And I think we've talked about this for years now, that it always seems really weird that when you have such a specific skill set, and this is really what has hurt Miami the most, is that they they have a bunch of backups who are nothing like their starter. That if you can have someone that can somewhat mirror what your starter does, even if they're not nearly as good, at least you can still run a lot of the same plays. It doesn't take as much prep to get back up to speed. And what I saw from Mariota last week, albeit against a historically bad defense, is that he can still run. He can still make these like short to intermediate throws. He's not going to break the game open like Daniels is. It's just with one big play, either deep down the field with a pass or just make one guy miss and go off for 50 yards. But I, I think that there's enough pieces of this offense to keep together. And I think this all comes down to the Washington front four. If they can get to Caleb Williams, which Caleb Williams hasn't seen in a month, and when he did before that, looked kind of terrible, that I think this game is still going to be wildly competitive. I mean, the spread indicates that. So I'll take the home team with Washington. And there's still a chance that Daniels plays, too, with this number. One of the bigger letdowns of the season would be losing this matchup of 1v2 overall. Those are always, like, just games I adore. Even if they're playing poorly, the games, like, hold weight for me. Um... I think it's a close game. I'll take Washington with the backup quarterback for that first game. Uh, They seem like they're a well-coached, decent operation. I trust Mariota, son. Well, you are getting a 1v2 matchup. Just the two is from 2015. Oh, nice. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still... I really want Daniels to play because this would be the most anticipated game of the week. It would just be really fun to watch. But if Washington can't get pressure, they're going to lose by like 30 points. If Caleb Williams gets yeah. to stand there and find St. Just on the field and throw at him, it's, it's curtains. Ooh. His only appearance last week was to be beaten on a corner terribly for a touchdown on a run. <laughs> yeah, he just, yeah, he couldn't get to Chuba on the outside. Could, couldn't seal that edge on Chuba. I mean, in there's, somebody to who, say- there's somebody they don't need to rest in a blowout. Who, St. Just? St. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you go right back out there. Uh, So Washington for Jeff and I, Chicago for the coin and Tim, Kansas City at Vegas. Vegas is a 10 point dog to the Chiefs. I don't know what to do with this game. I really want to never lay. I never laid as much with the Chiefs, but Jeff was gave me the warning in the preseason that this was the team that was making fun of Mahomes and like trying mm-hmm. to make a big deal of it. And of course, last time these teams play, the Raiders sort of embarrassed the Chiefs on Christmas Day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I like the Chiefs here. I like te- teasing the Chiefs down. Like the Raiders looked absolutely pathetic last week against the Rams. Yeah, in a game they don't that, have in a, a quarterback. In a, in a game that they covered and could have theoretically won, I suppose, but 
there's just zero confidence. And that was against the Rams D, which as I've mentioned a few times, sucks. This Kansas City defense, Jeff, I hear, is very good. Very good. Another injury, though. Watson is uh, out. He always seems to play well, especially versus the Chargers. Wait, wait, wait which Watson? Justin Watson? Uh, the corner. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Debo has been released from the hospital. Good for him. Andy Dalton. So was yeah, I don't know. A, I, I, Andy Dalton involved in a car accident today. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, so let's, let's get let's get on that Bryce Young number real quick. <laughs> Super lock that is. There's nothing. I don't think that spread would change regardless of who started. I, really? You don't? No, I don't. They're both equally so terrible. I, right I completely disagree. Uh, Dalton's not good. This is not what I'm trying I to f- say. I'd feel more comfortable with Bryce Young at plus nine right now. Dalton has done nothing since he's come in. Nothing. I, do you do you not remember Bryce Young? Clearly, I don't. But I, the guy I who got benched for games, Dalton. I'm hoping that a few games on the bench might have you know turned him around. I still refuse to give up on him completely. I'm Call taking the Chiefs. Hopeless. I didn't of want you him, are. but they made fun of Mahomes. They made Kermit the Frog. Fucking exactly. That's why I'm shit. picking them. You convinced me. And uh, I don't actually want to bet the game, but uh, I don't know. Mahomes has got a bit of a vindictive soul. The problem is the Chiefs aren't trying. The Chiefs won't go 100%. Andy Reid's going to use this to experiment with players and formations and, and plays. Um, so there's a bit of that, but in the end, I think Mahomes will, will have a couple throat slice moments of the fucking Raiders, and that'll be enough to to win the number. I just bet Denver as we were talking. Yeah, well, saying we, yeah, I, 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 I don't even I, I don't I don't even know if Dalton's going to be out, but I don't really care. If I can get, I wanted to bet minus nine against Dalton anyway. If I can bet minus nine against Bryce Young, I'm in. So we're not fourteen, but that'll clear ten for sure. I'm surprised it hasn't yet. So round to Casey, I'll go with you guys. I have no real like take on 10 points in this game. I'll take the revenge Kermit narrative with uh, Kansas City. Sunday night football, Dallas and San Francisco. I just mentioned that Debo got released from hospital. I don't imagine he's going to play this week. We don't know about Juwan Jennings. McCaffrey's going to be out till at least week 10, it seems. Maybe week 11 he can come back. Maybe it's week 10. I don't know. Uh, Ayuk's going to be out for the season. Kittle is on the injury report right now, too. Still don't really love the Cowboys, though, is the problem, Tim. Love Dallas here. I expect Dallas to win this game. I like Dallas against the number. I like Dallas teasing them up. Um, San Francisco is just just way too hurt, disastrously hurt, and their quarterback is not playing well. And Dallas is coming off a bye in a really desperate game. Uh, I, you know, for all the criticism that we give to McCarthy, and I think a lot of it is justified. I think he's actually a decent schemer, uh, and, and should be able to put together an offense that should be able to get enough points to beat what I think is a, just, I mean, a San Francisco team that's just a a complete shadow of itself right now. This San Francisco team is a, is a bad team, uh, because they're so, they're so darn hurt. I love, love, love the Cowboys here. I expect them to win. I like this game as a Feinberg. I kind of think Dallas covers and San Francisco wins. I think the 49ers win. I think the 49ers cover. And I'm telling you, the biggest story out of this week is going to be what is happening in Dallas after losing by 40 at home to Detroit. They, off a bye, they lose outright to a um, B squad due to injuries. Yeah, there's no excuse. No excuses. This is like, as uh, depleted yeah. as San Francisco can be. There is going to be gasoline poured on the what is Jerry going to do situation uh, when they lose this game outright. I believe they're losing this game outright. I'm taking the 49ers to cover with the hodgepodge offense. You know what? Uh, that'll only be the story for three minutes until as soon as Jerry starts to get headlines, Woody Johnson like cuts Aaron Rodgers or something so he could be in the news. <laughs> uh, you sold me, Jeff. I'll take San Francisco with you at four and a half. I like San Francisco. I've been big on San Francisco anyway, and you said that Dallas is a desperate team. I would say that the 49ers are probably a bit more desperate than I don't know if they're more desperate, but I th- because I still think that division is still is the San Francisco's path to the playoffs is the division, and I don't think Dallas can win the division. So, and that wild card is becoming a very difficult commodity with three, really four, really good teams in the NFC North, plus uh, you know Washington and Philadelphia in the East. Um, 
I, I, I really don't see a path for Dallas beyond the wild card, and the wild card is getting tight. So, well, I, I would anyway. say that the wild card would be easier for them if all four of the NFC North teams are actually like legitimately competitive for the playoffs, because then the win total wouldn't all be all that high. Like, you're not going to have four 11 win teams in a division. You wouldn't think. I mean, like, last not, year nine had, is probably the number. Then, yeah, last year we had, you know, the Bengals finishing last in the division at nine and eight. Yeah, kind of think that will happen with whoever finishes last in the NFC North. So that means Dallas probably has to get to ten wins. Um, yeah, so they're in a desperate spot. I, I just think I just I don't know. Both teams are, are desperate. Dallas is very well rested. San Francisco is beaten up and bloodied and doesn't have their players. It's a recipe for disaster. Monday Night Football: The Giants are at the Steelers, so an extra day of rest for Russ Danger. What was his name, Mister Incredible? Mr. Mr. Unlimited. That's right. Forgot how much we ragged on Russ. Is it weird that I'm happy to see him do well, Jeff? No, I've said this off the top. Yeah. I don't even know why. Oh, because they played the Jets. Um, it was lovely. There were feel goods. Like it felt good seeing him playing well, dropping ball in bucket, high fiving. Not gonna lie, like biased. I probably am able to like enjoy a Russ Wilson smile and a Steelers jersey more than a Broncos jersey. But I don't know. He just, he, we'll see if he keeps it up. Uh, Credit to Tomlin for this moment. Although, Pat, this could be my super lock. I really like the Giants here. Too many points. Now Russ looks, the Giants get spanked versus the Eagles. Russ dropping dimes and buckets on prime time. We're getting way too many points here with the Giants. I am biting. I am biting. I'll take the Giants. I'll take back these points. I'm with I you. I will tease Pittsburgh down as the last part of the tease, and I will take the Steelers because I just don't trust the Giants. I don't trust the Giants either, but I do know that they're going to show up and get to the quarterback every this week. This is going to be a terrible, yes. terrible game. Yeah. This I, is going to be like 23 I'm going to love it. I'm actually really – I'm looking forward to game. it. I, no, I like it. there's a there's a baseball game on that night, Jeff. You don't have to watch this game. No, they're not going against. Oh, it's Monday. They are on right. Monday. You so don't it's game you, three, the three. first game in New York. Yeah, you do. You do not need to watch this football game. What's your I mean, What's your World Series prediction? Who are you? I like the Yankees in six. Okay, so I'm betting the Dodgers. I don't know who I. I'm betting the Dodgers to support ex Blue Jay Shohei Otani. <laughs> The Yankees haven't won in 15 years. I think it'd be nice to see them winning again. I feel like it's better. They're for, a different uh, group of fans than I, when I was younger. But I, yeah, I, and the Dodgers are the now are the modern Yankees. It's the Dodgers that buy everybody now. I can't cheer for them. Settle down. Like you're they not do. wrong, but let's not like pretend like the Yankees. Uh... No, they're not. I'm not. I'm not. They're not crying poor either. But this generation of Yankee fan doesn't know how to do it. Because they didn't win like the previous generations. So their bravado feels like false, if that makes any sense. But when we were younger, like the 22-year-old Yankee fan, 30-year-old Yankee, like they had so much swagger. They were so annoying. These kids today, they're just trying to like think of how their uncle would react to something I agree. 25 years ago. I'm not insulting, like, as much as it might seem like one, it's just an observation. They haven't been to the World Series since 2009. They just yeah, don't so have these the kids, ability to... Yeah, they exactly. It's just the, the young... Uh, I don't even know... If, I don't even mean this to be rude. It might come off. But, like, that young, uh, you know, Guido Mig- Migliozzi in, in, in New York... He just doesn't know how to have the swagger that his brain is telling him he's supposed to have, but he doesn't know how to have it because he didn't win like his other his older relatives did. Interesting. I just always think it's good for the sport when a classical franchise wins every now and then. So, well, this I mean, this is orgasmic for baseball. It is, but but I mean, I guess the Dodgers won what during the sixty game season, so I guess. I, I it's sort of like when the Lakers won during the the whatever the bubble year, whatever it but, was. But it's funny because like the Celtics just won in the NBA. I would say it's probably better for the NBA when the Lakers win in a weird way. And it's just like with this, it's always better when the Yankees win uh, than when the Dodgers win. Would you not agree? This is probably a low, like an obvious statement. 
But in some ways, this will allow baseball to know exactly what its ceiling is in this moment. To have the superstars, your judge, your Otani, these teams, these markets, like you will now exactly know what your ceiling in this moment is. Like it's not Guardians versus Astro, uh, oh, so the Brewers. Yeah, I, I guess so. But I think you need to build off the momentum of this as well. If this is a captivating series with all these big stars, marquee franchises, big cities, that you see how this translates into next year as well. Does that like re and do people get like hot for baseball right now? And does that carry over into next year when mm -hmm. these two teams aren't necessarily in the World Series? Like you need something to spark it a little bit. That's a great point. I love baseball. I am very excited to be watching this world series i love like um just the markets i'm i'm buying all into the hyperbole i'm i am too like i to it outside of like during commercials between innings i couldn't imagine watching giant steelers uh over game three of that world series you don't get how the nfl works man <laughs> oh i don't know i understand oh no i totally understand that there were going to be tens of millions of people who do just that they could put panthers jags on they, it would oh, still absolutely. probably a hundred percent baseball no a hundred percent i'm just saying my brain doesn't work that way i personally couldn't imagine watching a pointless monday night game against that world game through the world series but that's me and i'm the other way yeah. like I, I i if i'm going to stay up and watch sports on monday i'm going to watch the football game i just have no interest baseball is in a very easy sport to watch another sport like well, to going be on. accompanied by a second viewing experience. Right? I find I got to kind of be plugged in so that I get a sense of like, what does this pitcher throw? And like, what? Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't like the flipping around to other games like during the inning. Like, I like to watch the inning or the sort of half <laughs> no, inning. As it yeah, is. I say, most people like it. Baseball just seems like such an iPad sport, Jeff. That's the way yes. I watch. I like to watch and like pay attention. Like, oh, okay, I've seen him throw a couple of sliders. I wonder if he'll throw one here sort of thing. And like I, I know what pitch he just threw because I was watching it. I wasn't like watching to see so I whether Russell that. Wilson converts a third and twenty six. I like that you love you're into the series. You're taking it over football, so you want to be like into the matchups and have it. Next thing you're going to tell me, you're like scoring the game from your couch. No, I, I, I would not do. Well, I mean, I would do that if I had a card or something. But no, I, I I'm not going to do that. If someone printed you a card, you would do it though, right? I mean, I could do it. It's a good way to stay focused and into the game. <laughs> I like that Tim but likes no. this sequencing of pitches. On our golf trip earlier, he was talking with like two or three guys that used to pitch when we were growing up about why didn't they throw a screwball? <laughs> it just seems like such a hard pitch to hit. It's also going to break your arm if you ever try to throw it. Why do you think no yeah, one throws one? I understand there's a high level of difficulty to the throw. I just think a screwball would be a very effective pitch. You only got to throw it like three or four times a game. Who, who do you think throws it? I don't know. It would have to be somebody who can also like throw a split finger to sort no, of that no, no, that is, that, that, is, that is not anything similar. The two grips are so it's not even close to him of how you throw a split finger versus how you throw a screwball. It's why people don't throw a screwball so you don't break your elbow. I get that there's a high level of difficulty or everyone would be doing it. But no one does it. Like I don't know, yeah, no one does it anymore. Last no, guy, you're right. Group, 2019 was the last one. Some dude on the Angels seems like. Yeah, like if, if you can throw a circle change, you can get the same sort of like moving it to the outside or even like a two seamer can work that way too, depending on the pressure you put on your finger. But like an actual screwball, like it's, it's basically non-existent. I want, I'm going to bet Josh Allen to an MVP and probably go eat myself a, buy a smash burger for dinner tonight. Just put that well, enjoy. Smash enjoy, burger Jeff. sounds delicious right now. Better yeah, than that. It's e. got me burger. thinking about it. <laughs> That's unfortunate for you. People well, are going to blame Trump. They people are, are going to no, blame, no, people are, why, people are gonna blame <laughs> Cust. First, yeah, this all happened <laughs> after we chatted about it or before we chatted about it. So how can yeah, I? But, be you, but you didn't know. Doesn't matter. It, like it, it, it was already. Are, 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 are you saying that you didn't have this thought already? I'm saying I can't go back in time and change things. Yeah, but, I was yeah, yeah, but, you, but listen. So the moment you I came up with, with, with your quarter, yeah. But so you say you didn't think about it. 
It was just an on-the-spot yeah, comment that you've made. You said that you've had the Smash Burger take written in your notes for a while, meaning that you've had this oh, argument constructed for a while. You put paper to digital pen, and boom, E. coli. Off air, remember. will you tell me why you won't on air? Yes, like I will. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> Super locks for the week. I'm going to take Denver minus nine. Go first, Tim. Your record's worse. Cowboys. Ooh. Dallas plus four and a half. Yeah, I don't like that one. Um, you know what? What? I only have done it once. Chargers? Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna drop an anvil on a on a bad team in a bad spot. Yeah, this is always a costly week for you if it goes awry. No, it is what it is. I uh, people would be shocked. I had made maybe one of my smallest charger bets ever last night because I rarely like I yeah, would bet if, every but, but, game. But if you're super locking them in, I assume it's you know a uh, few stacks of high. Yeah, that'll probably be game. big. That'll probably be big, and I will probably have them to finish so many like parlays, teasers, like money lines from things at one o'clock. But last night I actually won money on the game. Because I bet Justin Herbert to not throw a pick for more money than I bet the actual game. None of them were very like that much for me, but I didn't, I had no vibe on how that game would have played out. Um, oh, I was annoying though. Fuck. Do you know why I asked Jeff Tim about uh, where to get that villa? Why? Because Jeff was able to hook me up with a car service when I went to Toronto for my kids. Jeff knows. Jeff knows the movers and shakers. No, I offense. believe it. Like I wouldn't car ask. Service. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't ask me. I don't like to travel. A car service from the airport from the town in which I live when I have young kids that can accommodate some of your needs is a lot different than like, do I have, do I know anyone look like with weeks or looking to sell weeks? And I, uh, I don't even need, I, I don't even know. And it's not that they need to own the place to rent it to me. I was just wondering if you had like an in with like a good travel service or something like that. That yeah, does no, like specifically these things like a golf. I'd love a to golf, go there. You want to come? No, but I, I, I've been, I could use a, I'm going right after the Super My Bowl. vacations are just to like cities. I need to go to just one of those like nothing warm weather ones. Yeah, listen, man. Middle of the fe- middle of February, you want to go to a warm climate destination after where we yeah. live. So if anyone knows about it's Putacana that I want to go to to like I said to play at the. I mean, I could just get a room at the Corrales Resort, but I want to go. You know, we're a few friends coming, wives coming. It'll be fun having your own like villa and chef and things like that. That seems like the way oh, to do it. Wow! Right? Holy shit! Yes, yeah. tell your wife. Ooh. Maybe, maybe she wants to go too. Yes. Yeah. My wife went back to work this week off mat leave, so you know. So now, she, so after like four months, she'll be like, "Get me the fuck out of here! Let's go on vacation." I agree. There you go. So if one of the if one of the viewers knows how to like get us in there, then we'll be good to go. But and then Pozzola told his audience yesterday that I didn't come to the stream because my wife wouldn't let me. Is that true? As if, like, as if, as if, when it comes to Chargers ball, I do whatever I want. Rob also told us that he'd make a million dollars a year selling his picks, yet he moved to a house that wasn't big enough to house his tortoise. So I don't know what to believe with Rob. Okay, yes, I've heard about, yeah, Rob's had to get rid of Torty. Uh, I know. (laughs) Good. I like that, actually. Thank you for reminding me. You can use that one. Yeah, He's not going to watch this deep into the show, if at all. So you can drop that one on him when he's really grilling you on a Monday night. Yeah. Thank you. But anyway, the guy, the car service guy, we can't use him again. He talks way too much. Oh, I'm sorry. I actually, I... Stop yeah. using him, too? I, no, I, I use the... Fr- I, um, we usually travel with the car seat, so I asked a buddy who doesn't, but they're, like, good, and they travel a lot. So it was a reputable source he, he number, was very, but it's not he, one that i'd use myself he was a very good driver he just didn't he just talks too much it's annoying the entire time i don't like drivers that talk i'm just yeah especially airport leave me alone all right that will do it on the pat mayo experience actually tim do you want to recap your teaser sure i am going to give out a six pointer which is steelers down to a half point chiefs down to four 
Baltimore down to three and a half, the Lions down to five, and Dallas all the way up to plus ten. You have the Chargers on there, right? No, no, okay. put the Chargers on there. All right, all right. sorry, sorry about the Chargers. Saints, I think he said that was too many points. Either yeah, I, I, that's precisely it. All right. Well, that will do it on the Pat Mayo Experience. Thanks for hanging with us. Tim Andagust! Tim Andagust. It's not my name. My favorite show of the year so far. Oh, okay. I know you didn't like it because it went long. We barely talked about football, but I thought it was a great time. Oh, I didn't mind. I thought we, I thought we had fun. This is one of the more podcasty shows we've done in a while. Yeah? Don't know what that means. Well, between doing like an actual video show with a set rundown of like we normally do, this felt more like the shows that we used to do when we first started this like 12 years ago. Okay. Well, fair enough. Like put people in a room, although none of us are in the same room and just kind of go. We get to what we get to if we, if we get to it. Right, Jeff? Right. All right. If you want a more structured show that is shorter, I recommend tuning in on Wednesday evening to the Best Bet Show with myself, Rob, and Cam. So that will come out on Wednesday evening. They'll be back on Friday morning with Tambo. So sub, rate, and review to get Matt Ron sub to Mayo Media Network on YouTube as well. Smash like while you're here. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Mayo Experience. Experience.